Ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon we are live for today's live Flag the Flag coverage of the NASCAR Cup Series Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. As today we have the first NASCAR Cup Series road course race of the NASCAR 2024 season. Two races in the books already this weekend with the NASCAR Truck Xfinity races yesterday and three streams in total with streams for both of those races as well as yesterday's on-track activity for NASCAR Cup Series practice and qualifying for this weekend's event. Appreciate each and every one of you guys that are tuning in here this afternoon and that have tuned in so far throughout the weekend's live streamed uh, events on record, really. Uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series coverage yesterday. We set a goal of 100 likes on the stream, obviously, like we do every week, but we ended up getting our record for this year for most likes in an Xfinity Series stream. We also, in that stream, had the most views of any other Xfinity Series race so far this season. Uh, most of the time, Daytona is my vo most viewed stream for each series at the beginning of every year. That was the case at least last year and the year before that. Uh, I was at Daytona, so I didn't actually do streams during Speed Week. But uh, this year, that was not the case. And the reason being, at least in my opinion, is because the Xfinity race took uh, place Monday night after the Daytona 500. So I just wanted to do... Uh, Put in the community tab yesterday after the stream. Thank you uh, for tuning in for that and really all day because we were streaming all day yesterday. And a lot of you guys that were in the chat for that last stream were also in the chat for even the very first stream that we did during cup practice at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time yesterday the morning. So, I mean, we had eight to eight and a half hours of streaming yesterday and a lot of you guys were there for each and every minute of it. So I uh, greatly appreciate it. And uh, as we look forward to today's race and today's coverage, try to do the best I can once again. Uh, today's race is on your local Fox affiliate. If you're wondering where you can watch it, the drop of the green flag is scheduled for right around 345 Eastern time. So we're a little less than 45 minutes away from that. While we await that, we've got some predictions to get out for you guys here today. Per usual, we go live about 45-ish minutes before the drop of the green flag for every NASCAR Cup race because I give predictions out for who I think will run well not run well uh, in the race. Give you guys some fantasy advice going forwards and uh, advice for elsewhere as far as, again, which drivers I expect to contend for a race win, maybe outsiders to get a top 10 every week, and uh, drivers who I don't think are going to run well based off the speed they have so far this weekend through practice and qualifying as well as just recent success on that style of racetrack or that racetrack in general. So, uh, today, we're going to start off with the don't-haves like I do every single week. Uh, these are the three drivers that I have pegged to not run well, and they are drivers that you would usually think would either be a bigger name, run well on a more consistent basis, or with this style of racetrack today being a road course, maybe uh, you know a road course ringer that you would expect to run well, I'm going to think that is not going to run well. In that case, I do have one road course ringer on this list that has ran well, uh, not only with the next-gen car on road courses, but just over the, his, really, career on road courses, or at least the back half of it. Michael McDowell, I don't think, is going to run well today. Ford looked extremely bad yesterday. They have not been uh, to where they want to be. Uh, they're behind Toyota and Chevy exponentially through the first five races of the season. Uh, Daytona, Atlanta, the super speedways were really the only shining moments Ford had, and they were unable to get a win in either one of those races. Even look during speed weeks themselves outside of qualifying on the pole at Daytona and really sweeping the front row. Obviously, the uh, following week at Atlanta, it has been a lackluster season for Ford. Uh, Michael McDowell, uh, the reason why I don't have him pegged to run very well, he just doesn't look good this weekend. The front row cars were both outside the top 20, which is Weird to say because Todd Gillen had a top three at Indy last year uh, on a road course, or maybe that was two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago, my bad. But anyway, Front Row Motorsports has had good runs at Indy. Obviously, Michael McDowell won at Indy last year. Todd Gillen had a good run there the season before that. The next-gen era, you expect the Front Row cars to compete for a top-10 finish. Uh, it doesn't matter whether that's McDowell or Gillen. McDowell, in his case, you'd expect him to maybe compete for the win. But not only the Fords haven't been quick, but they've been slow as well. Michael McDowell's 26th overall in practice yesterday, qualified 27th. Uh, the speed he's got here today, I don't expect him to get a top 10 finish. Uh, track position matters way too much on road courses. And honestly, with the way the stage splits are now that we have the cautions back, I see McDowell as being one of those drivers that's going to stay out at the end of each stage to get stage points because of the lack of speed that that team has this weekend. 
and that the Blue Ovals in general have this weekend. So I've got Michael McDowell uh, at the very least finishing outside the top 10. There were no Fords that qualified in the top 10 for the race today and no Fords that were in the top 12 overall in practice as well. Uh, lap averages were a little better for Austin Sindrick. He was the only maybe shining bright spot for Fords in on-track activity yesterday, but it doesn't go much further than that. Um, and so I have McDowell on this list. To go along with that, the next two drivers I have on my don't have list this weekend are Fords, and they are both former champions. I have Joey Logano on here first. He has had a season from hell so far this year, uh, and it is not very good uh, for him coming into this race today based off of just how he's ran so far this season alone. Uh, 20th or worse in four of the five races we've had so far. The only outlier to that was a top 10 finish he had, which was an 8th place run at Las Vegas, a day in which he did qualify on the pole and ran back half of the top 10 the entire race. So uh, he had speed going into that one, was able to at least capitalize and get to the end of the race, get a good finish. But the other races outside of that, his best finish is 22nd so far this season. Uh, not only the lack of consistency for Logano, I think, is pegging him behind, but in the only two races at Coda we've had with the next-gen car in the Cup Series, he's finished 28th and 31st. Very, very poor finishes. He was running mid-pack for most of last year's race, got taken out on a late race restart, uh, but he was also in the middle of the pack when that had ended up taking place as well. So I don't expect Joey Logano to have a good run today. Qualified 35th. He's starting very deep in the field. It's been a bad season for Logano. I think it gets just as bad, if not worse, today. 19th overall in practice. So at best, he's going to run mid-pack, I think. Uh, I definitely don't see him getting a top 10 starting that deep in the field. This next former champion also starts deep in the field, also a Ford. Again, very low on the Fords this weekend. And until really proven otherwise, uh, Brad Keselowski, he starts 36th. He is horribly bad at road course races. Um, a lot of people probably slept on him being bad on road courses because of those early 2010 years with the car of tomorrow where he was competing for wins at Watkins Glen. But ever since the Gen 6 car, he has been bad at Watkins Glen Sonoma. Now with the added road course races on the schedule, uh, that has hurt him, I think, overall in his point standings, not only his last few years with Penske, but here with RFK Racing. End of the season, we see Chris Buescher usually a little bit ahead of Brad Keselowski in the regular season standings. Large part of that, Buescher is a pretty good road course racer. Brad Keselowski is not. Uh, one of the shiny bright spots for Ford this week, and I mentioned, was Austin Sindrick. Well, Chris Buescher I'd probably have as a second best driver in the Fords uh, so far this weekend by way of speed. So if you had to pick maybe two Ford drivers to get a top 10 finish today, I would say Sindrick and Busher. But yeah, Brad Keselowski, I would definitely not. Uh, it starts 36th, like I mentioned already. He was 30th overall in practice yesterday. His only three cup starts at Coda, 35th, 14th, and 19th. So he has not finished better than 14th place. Last year was the 35th place finish. And get this, with the next-gen car, so pretty much RFK Racing, uh, well, no, not even RFK Racing. I forgot. Yeah, that first year, the next gen, uh, Keselowski was still with Penske. So in all 12 road course races with the next gen car, Brad Keselowski only has one top 10 finish. That top 10 finish was in 2022 at Sonoma, where he finished 10th. That was his best run. He actually did lead laps that day, uh, surprisingly. But needless to say, it has not been good for Keselowski on road courses. He's kind of He gets involved in an incident almost every single one. And it's mostly his fault for the incident. It's just overdriving a corner. Car slips out from underneath him and he spins. Uh, I think he was one of the drivers that actually spun in practice yesterday too. I don't like Brad Keselowski this weekend at all. Uh, 10 straight finishes outside the top 10 um, on road course races. I mentioned that only top 10 in the only 12 races we've had with the next gen Dakota was at Sonoma. And again, that was 10 road course races ago. So 10 straight outside the top 10. I think that streak continues today. Uh, it's hard to uh, bet against those odds, especially with uh, Brad Keselowski on a road course. So I know it's like beating a dead horse for those of you that are longtime viewers of the channel and watch these live commentary streams every week for the last couple seasons. I mentioned Brad Keselowski being bad every time we go to a road course race. So uh, sorry for any Brad Keselowski fans out there that uh, hate me reiterating that every single time we go to a road course. But until proven otherwise, and I don't think I'm going to be, um, I got to keep putting him on the list for this. It's just an easy don't have. Don't have, so sorry if I confuse anybody there. Uh, the only three don't haves were Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Michael McDowell. We're going into the sleeper picks this weekend. 
Uh, Ty Gibbs is a sleeper pick, mainly because he just hasn't gotten a cup win yet in his career. But I would honestly pencil him in as a must-have this weekend, as well as a sleeper pick, which I haven't really done before, but I'm going to do this week because he has to be in your fantasy lineups if you don't have him in already. Not only he's been hot the last several weeks, Toyota themselves have been absolutely dominant on short tracks. The same package that is run on short tracks is ran on road courses, so... I expect Toyota to be very strong again here today. Again, kind of like I mentioned with Ford being bad until proven otherwise. A lot of the Toyotas qualified inside the top 10. Six of them start inside the top 10. Ty Gibbs starts on the front row, qualified second, only 15 one thousandths of a second off of William Byron's pole lap. On top of that, he's got three straight top 10 finishes coming into the day today. He has led the second most laps in the NASCAR Cup Series this season, only behind his teammate Denny Hamlin. And he did win both stages at Bristol last week, led over 100 laps in that race, led over 50 laps the week before at Phoenix. He has been very close to breaking through to victory lane already this season on numerous occasions. With this package, expect Ty Gibbs to compete for another win today. Coming into the race weekend, I had him to win. And I still like his chances of winning the race. I think it's going to be between three drivers. I just don't want to pick him to win because he hasn't done it before. Uh, that is the only reason I'm not taking Ty Gibbs to win this race. Um, it's hard for me to say, like, he's going to get his first career win today. It's hard for me to put, like, all the chips forward in on Ty Gibbs. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to take Ty Gibbs for my race win today, but it would not shock me if he does end up winning. Uh, he's definitely one of my top three. Uh, as far as the second driver on that top three, who I'm also going to have in a sleeper and the must-have, and the reason why he's in a sleeper is because he's only got four career wins. That's Tyler Reddick, another Toyota driver. Mentioned all the success Toyota's had with the short tracks and so far this weekend on the road course with the same package. Uh, Ty, Tyler Reddick was behind in practice compared to some of the other Toyotas, uh, was 12th overall and his lap averages were in the back half of the top 10, but he pushed forward through qualifying, qualified in third place. And he did start on the front row and win this race a season ago. So I think you got to factor that in, uh, Tyler Reddick of his four career cup wins. Three of them are on road courses, obviously he had the one last year at Coda. And he also has two wins with RCR on road courses at road America and Indianapolis. Uh, so I have Tyler Reddick winning this, uh, sorry, not winning this race, uh, but I do have him on the must-have list. Again, he's one of those top three that I have to win. Uh, and if you look at also with Gibbs and Reddick, a strong shot to win the race. Uh, the winner of the race is so far at Coda this weekend, bringing the cautions back. Corey Hyman, the truck race, started second. Kyle Larson in the Xfinity race started first. Track position matters. Reddick won last year. He qualified second. Guys that qualified up at the front of the field are going to be the contenders all day long for the win, especially having that track position early. They can uh, pit before the end of each stage, get themselves back into the lead again. Pretty much as long as they don't have any course cutting penalties or get taken out from behind on a restart, they're going to be in the top five by way of track position pretty much all day. So uh, it's hard to go against those guys starting up front. Those are two of them sleeper and must-haves for those guys. Now, the only other one that I have on the sleeper pick and not a must-have is Shane Van Gisbergen, and that's only because he does have two career top 10s and his only two career cup starts, both on road courses, obviously, winning at Chicago in the street race last season, and also last season at Indianapolis, he ran and finished in 10th. Both those races were with Trackhouse. Uh, he is with Colleague Racing now, but the strong suit of that is A.J. Allmendinger, a teammate of his, did win a race last season with Colleague Racing at the Charlotte Roval, a race that Shane Van Gisbergen was not in. Uh, as far as Shane Van Gisbergen, yesterday he ran the Xfinity race, uh, much like Allmendinger, but I do have SVG on this list uh, over A.J. because he did out-qualify him and uh, overall just kind of looks a little bit better in the cup side so far this weekend. And uh, he led, obviously, uh, tied for the most laps with AJ in the Xfinity race yesterday. He looked very fast. I think he'll be fast today. I think he gets a top 10. Kind of, again, similar to what I've already stated a couple times already. Until proven otherwise, you got to go with the stats. He has had two top 10s in his only two cup starts. So I think he goes three for three with all these races, uh, again, taking place on road courses. Now, he did start, or he does start 12th today, which is his worst starting spot of the three NASCAR Cup races he's been in. Uh, he had started uh, first, seventh in the first two Cup races he has started in and finished in the top 10 in both. So 
He's going to be teetering, I think, on the edge of the top 10. I don't think he's going to be up there competing for the race win necessarily. Uh, so that's why I don't have him as a must-have as well. Uh, but I do have him getting a top 10 finish. He's probably going to run like 8th to 13th pretty much all day. Uh, stays out of trouble. Has other guys have trouble around him. Then he should get that top 10. Uh, so SVG would be the other sleeper pick for today's race. Uh, I mentioned that Reddick and Gibbs are both sleepers and must-haves, so I didn't want to overload the must-haves because only so many drivers can finish inside the top 10. The only other driver I have on the must-have list is my uh, pick to win the race today, and that is going to be your pole sitter, William Byron. It's a three-headed coin as far as who I think is going to win the race today. It's going to be Byron, Reddick, Gibbs, uh, the odds books say the same thing. Uh, everybody else outside of those three are like plus 1200 or more odds to win because these three are the dominant favorites. And I do have to agree with that. Their speed this weekend has been way ahead of everybody else's Toyota has been very strong. Uh, if there is going to be a Chevy that is going to win today, I think it's going to be a Hendrick Chevy, not just because I think it's Byron, but even Chase Elliott looks like he's got some speed back again this weekend. He ran well at the last couple road races last year, and Kyle Larson has some speed this weekend as well. Uh, Bowman was third overall in practice, so it's going to be a battle between Hendrick Motorsports and Toyota today, and I think Byron is the best chance to win this race out of the Hendrick Motorsports camp. Again, he's got the track position starting on pole in this race. Uh, he finished in the top five at Coda last year, a fifth place run, ran top five all day. Uh, fastest overall in practice as well. Uh, I'm having a trend of picking the fastest car uh, through practice qualifying all season, and it really hasn't failed me much. Uh, yeah, it's not going to win every single week. You know, that driver might get into an incident or have some sort of an untimely penalty or something of that nature that takes him out of it, but that driver has been running top five at least by way of speed in each and every single one of these races this season. So I have to take uh, one of those drivers again. It was going to be one of these three, and I'm taking Byron. And the main reason why I'm taking Byron over the other two, uh, number one, I already mentioned with Gibbs, I didn't want to take him because he hasn't won a cup race before, even though he's been very close. It would not shock me if he wins today. Wouldn't shock me if Reddick wins today because he did win at Coda last season. He's got uh, three career cup series road course wins. Byron only has one. Uh, so, you know, Reddick's got that in Byron's favor, but the execution by team, how many times do we go to a racetrack on any given race weekend, not just a road course, and we see drivers and teams at Hendrick Motorsports execute a race from start to finish more often than a Toyota driver. It happens a lot, and whether that would be the pit crew by way of pit strategy calls, whether that would be the pit crew itself making a mistake on pit road. We've seen Tyler Reddick's pit crew have many mistakes on pit road already this season. We saw it last year. For that reason, I can't trust Tyler Reddick. I remember I picked Reddick to win three races last year. He won at Coda. One of them I picked. The other two he picked. He had the fastest car, and his pit crew made a mistake. Both times, there was a tire that fell off of his car, and he ended up finishing a couple laps down. I can't take Tyler Reddick again for the nature of the sake of his pit crew. I'm not faulting Reddick at all uh, for any of these situations. It's just the matter of the fact and uh, the execution by the team as a whole, driver, crew chief, um, and pit crew. I think Byron is the best option of these three. Um, Ty Gibbs, you know, his pickers even had mistakes this year, not to the extent of the 2311 Toyotas, but it's still not perfect. Uh, really, ever since they flip-flopped the pit crew between Gibbs and Bell uh, at the end of last season before the playoffs, both Gibbs's and Bell's pit crew have been off. Um, again, Reddick and Bubba Wallace's pit crew have been off as well at 2311 pretty much all season and all of last year for that matter. So uh, execution is what I'm going to boil down to picking William Byron today uh, for the race win. Also, if you're looking at a driver that is, we've seen a lot of corner cutting penalties in the S's so far this week, whether that would have been in practice and qualifying yesterday for the Cup Series, whether that was a truck or Xfinity race yesterday, I expect there to be more today. I think it's more likely that a driver like a Reddick or a Gibbs maybe pushes that issue a little too hard, especially if they're on a pushing end at the end of the race trying to chase somebody and they would be more likely to have that mistake than William Byron. You know, one thing I will credit William Byron to, when do you ever see William Byron either A, crack under pressure, or B, just not, you know, have, he'll make some sort of a mistake like behind the wheel. You don't see him do either of these things. 
you do see drivers at Hendrick Motorsports from time to time. Not very often, but they still do it. Kyle Larson still does that from time to time. Chase Elliott still does that from time to time. And while you could probably argue that maybe that's because they're better drivers overall, so they're going to push the limit a little harder, William Byron just makes the most of his opportunities, I think. He gets fast cars on a weekend basis. Again, he's got the same equipment as those two drivers, but the difference between Byron and uh, Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson is Byron's not going to guy going to be the guy that's going to over push the issue. If he's got an eighth place car, he's going to finish eighth place. He's not going to take that car like Kyle Larson would and potentially win the race, but he's also not going to take that car, potentially make a mistake and have a DNF or a, a lap down finish. Byron's not going to do that. He makes the most of his opportunities that he, uh, I should say he uh, does whatever the car gives him, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And in a race like this, We've seen a lot of penalties so far this weekend. When you had the track position, he's got the crew chief. I don't expect that team as a whole. He's got one of the best pit crews as well. I don't expect them to crack under pressure. They've won this season as well uh, on top of it. So I've got William Byron winning uh, for today's race. But the must-have picks again, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Ty Gibbs, sleepers. You could throw Gibbs Reddick in there, but Shane Van Gisbergen would be another one. Uh, and then the don't haves this weekend, the three drivers you should absolutely stay away from for fantasy purposes would be Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, and Michael McDowell. I'd like to see what you guys think in the chat. I was kind of looking as I was talking there, so if I ever stumble over my speech when I uh, go on kind of like a rant, I guess, of uh, how I think certain drivers are going to do and reading off statistics, it's uh, usually because I'm looking at the chat and reading as I'm talking, and that kind of throws me off sometimes. That's my own thing. Comment, all, comment away. I'll get to him eventually. Robert Perkle, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Adam C., also thanks uh, for watching. Kyle Busch, a contender. I don't think he is for the race win, but I think he could have a good run. Uh, he's been very good at the road courses with the next-gen car. RCR, and even with Joe Gibbs Racing, he was getting good top five runs. Coda has been a good track for him ever since it's come on the schedule. Honestly, uh, both of the Gen 6 and then with the next-gen car at Coda, Kyle Busch has been you know, race in and race out. One of those guys that's just not necessarily contending for a win every single time, but he's, you know, running third through fifth, like every single race. And I would not be shocked if he ends up getting another top five today, honestly. Zachary Wall, thanks for tuning in. Totally forgot about Bowman. Yeah, Bowman, another one. I, I didn't mention him, but, well, I did a little bit. I mentioned that he was fast in practice. He was third overall in practice. He's got a good car. He didn't qualify particularly well. I think he messed up on his qualifying lap somewhere around this 3.4 mile racetrack, not hard to do. Um, so the speed is definitely there for Bowman, but he didn't qualify inside the top 10 like the other 300 cars did. White Gamer TV, thanks for tuning in. As well, JoJo, Regine Huddleston, and Matthew Dorta Bruno, thanks for watching. Got Wally Dolan back finishing 30, uh, 43rd. Well, he can, you know, because there aren't that many cars in the field. So, sure, we'll go with that. Brett Whiteside, thanks for tuning in. What's up with RCR? It's just a short track program with RCR. It's not a weekend, a week to week basis. I know they struggled two weeks in a row, but it's just the short tracks. Road courses, Kyle Bush is fine. Austin Dillon's not a great road course racer, but even he, I think, had a top 10 at Coda either last year or the year before. I, I was looking at it. He finished eighth either the last season or the season before that. But, uh, I mean, yeah, he'll be Kyle Busch, RCR. Uh, Kyle Busch at least will be fine on road courses going forward. And then Super Speedway program, RCR is going to be fine. Intermediate program, RCR is going to be fine. It's just the short track stuff they got to get figured out. They were bad on short tracks last year. They're bad on short tracks this year. It's not really a surprise, to me at least. But it's not an every week thing either. I mean, Bush did win three races last year. I think it's going to be hard for him to contend for a championship, especially with Martinsville um, and Phoenix being the last two races of the season. As long as that's the case, it's hard for me to say that Kyle Busch would win a championship at RCR, but to say that he isn't going to win a couple races every year at RCR, I I think he can do that. On uh, what lap Cinder takes... Uh, Sure, you're uh, talking about Bubba out. I, I don't know. I I don't see... Uh, Cindric doesn't really... The only time I've ever really seen him cause any sort of, like, 
crazy thing to happen that causes a wreck is on like super speedways, but I usually don't see that happen on like any other racetrack. And usually he does on super speedways because I think he's kind of overstepping the limits and trying to go for the win. And he isn't really in like winning position a lot on other racetracks so far in his cup career, so maybe that's why, but I think that nickname uh that he had of Spindrick is long long gone. I don't think uh I should stick with him anymore. It's definitely a nickname of the past. SVG's bad to the bone. Is very good. Northwest Arizona, thanks for tuning in. Have all it takes to do the announcing job, information, knowledge, entertainment, preparedness. Uh, pretty much respectful. Could listen to you like Emma Ren. Hey, well, I appreciate it, man. That's uh, what I'm trying to do, at least. Maybe, you know... Not like an MRN thing, but just trying to build up a reputation, I guess, of being able to commentate so I can hopefully do it uh, down the road as a full-time job. Competition is stacked deep. Um, I mean, in the Cup Series on a week-to-week -week basis, yes. As far as today goes, I think I would not be shocked... I'd be more shocked if somebody outside of the top three today wins. I mean, you can maybe throw Christopher Bell in there because he also is a pretty good road course racer and has won a couple of them with the next-gen car. But uh, yeah, if somebody that starts outside the top four wins this race today, then I'll say I didn't see it coming. Bronny 24 ever. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, Cindric being fastest as expected. Yeah, for Ford. On a road course, he's definitely the, the him and potentially Bush are like the only two shining spots in a good way on uh, today's action. I think for Ford, Linda Leverett pulling for Chase Elliott, Brian Gills pulling for SVG. Dan Bowers says Chase Elliott. I do have a poll open in the chat for you guys to vote for who you think will win. In today's race, Patrick Chatterley taking A.J. Allmendinger. King Jalo, thanks for tuning in. like to see the three winning drivers from this weekend. Race a 10-lap uh, shootout. See who can really drive. I think the truck guys have more balls, <laughs> right? It's interesting. It's an interesting take. 66 votes so far have been casted for who you think will win. 55% say somebody other than Byron Gibbs or Reddick. I, I'd be shocked, honestly, if one of those three don't win. I had to put those three in there because I think they're just clear in a way the favorites for this. I think a lot of people of the 54% are probably taking Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson just because they do have some sort of speed this weekend. But I don't, I don't know. I, they've been lacking behind uh, this weekend just a little bit more than their teammate Byron and the Gibbs cars in particular. I mean, even Bubba Wallace had speed this weekend, which isn't usually the case on road courses for him, so I didn't want to throw him in the don't-haves like I do on road courses like every time, but uh, he actually did have a couple of top 10s last year on road courses too. I do have to get my fantasy team in before I forget. I'll just keep reading the chat uh, kind of as I do this for the next several minutes. Bond 1771, thanks for tuning in. Road Course is different breed of racetrack. Yes, they are. Kobayashi, go hot dog, man. <laughs> Not that Kobayashi. <laughs> That's a, that's a different Kobayashi, I think. I think I know who you're talking about. If you're talking about like that uh, that one Japanese guy that was always winning those uh, Nathan's hot dog eating contest, this was like before Joey Chestnut. I uh, yeah, that's a different Kobayashi. That's that's funny though. Frank Powers, thanks for tuning in. 
Mark Wachowski going with uh, Bush Logano Busher. Hate to break it to you. I don't think Logano's turning his luck around today. As stated already. It's a road course and he's fast. Elliot, definitely a contender. Oh, he's definitely a contender. But the other three just look so much better. And Elliot hasn't won a road course race with the next-gen car. Kind of similar to Ty Gibbs, like, not having a win in his career. It's hard for me to pick him. I picked him last year, and he he bit me. I took him. Uh, I took Elliot to win at Indy last year. He finished second to uh, McDowell. I'm glad I am uh, taking care of my fantasy team right now because I probably wouldn't have fared too well with who I had last week and <laughs> who I'm putting in this week. Dale, thanks for tuning in. Take on the melon. Um, Chastain. I will say last year he didn't run well on road courses, surprisingly. Uh, because the year before he was in contention to win a couple of them and did win at Coda in 2022. He doesn't look to have like top five speed out of the gate this weekend. And even Suarez, for that matter, last year didn't run as well on road courses as he did the year before when he won at Sonoma. I don't know what Trackhouse might have did differently last year in road courses compared to this year, but I don't know. He could have a good day. I just don't see him up there for the win necessarily late. Upset pick would be SVG. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good upset pick. I'd have to agree with you on that one. I don't think he's the best upset pick. If you consider Ty Gibbs an upset because he hasn't won a cup race, that would probably be my upset pick. But he, he as by way of how fast he is. Gibbs uh, definitely is a contender. Ty Gibbs good on road courses. Yeah, that's another thing I didn't really mention with Gibbs, just how good of a career he's had on road courses in the Xfinity series. And I know those cars don't translate well to the cup side of things, but I do... Uh, Think it factors at least a little bit. He's had extra on-track activity this weekend, much like a lot of the front runners. I think you'll see today uh, raced in the Xfinity race yesterday too. It helps. The more track time, the better. I don't care how different the cars are now between series. You get more track time at that same track. I think it helps. It can't hurt. And if it can't hurt, you'd have to imagine it would help more than it would hurt. If that makes sense. All right, I got my team in now. Zachary Schuschman, thanks for tuning in. He's going Bowman, too. Michael Walter Gridwalk going on right now. Yeah, I got to I gotta get that broadcast up. I don't even have it up yet. We're probably only about 10 or so minutes away from the drop of the green flag. Give or take. Again, the race is on your local Fox affiliate today. Got about five minutes till the command to fire engines. I'll let you uh, listen into the national anthem when they come back from the commercial break. Leonardo, thanks for tuning in. Greetings from Brazil once again. I remember seeing you in the chat yesterday. Yeah, I should say in the U.S., in the in the U.S., it is on your local Fox affiliate. I can't say the same for anybody not living in the U.S. I don't know exactly when the national anthem just. Okay, well, never mind. Sorry about that. 
I need to make sure I have the broadcast up and ready to go. I, I was doing that last year, and we kind of kicked off the streams that way, but getting a longer pre-race in uh, for the streams this year. Reading all the notes and stuff, and I, I miss it every time, every week. Dark Crypto, thanks for tuning in. He's ready for some road racing today. Mike G says Robbie Gordon. He was a good road course ringer in his day. Won a couple of them. Hopefully the raw feed's working out of the gate this week. I really hope so. Haven't spotlighted the uh, Fantasy League yet today. We'll do that before the start of the race. I can't do it on screen, but I can uh, pull it up on my phone. You can join the NASCAR Fantasy League on the NASCAR mobile app or NASCAR.com website. Sign up with your email. It is free to join. And when you go to join a league, join our league, the KRC League. KRC in all caps, space capital L on league when you go to search for it. Put it in the chat real quick. KRC League. Got a chance to win two tickets to any NASCAR race if you're choosing the following season. If you win our regular season or playoff championship, you can win them both too. Double down on it. Um Points reset at the end of the regular season, so we'll have two separate champions. If you're not in the league right now, yeah, you don't have a chance of winning the regular season title. We're already five races in, but you can get a gist of how it works. You can still play for fun every week, and then uh, when the playoffs come around, you'll be ready to go, and you can compete for the championship when the points reset. So, definitely want to join that league. I just had it up on my phone, too, when I put the fantasy team in and I closed out of it. So now I got logged back in again. Our league standings coming into this week. Troy, the great still on top of the leaderboard. Uh, I think he's been leading in points every week so far this year, uh, 968 total points through the first five races. And he still has a very narrow lead. It's very early in the season. So the points are still going to be compacted together. We get to about that 10 race mark. I think things will start to separate a little more. We're going to know kind of the, you know, five to seven, people who are going to be competing for the rest of the year, but it's still very much tight. 100 points separates the top nine right now. And uh, usually week after week, the highest points getter has been getting over 200 points. So it's very tight. Uh, but Troy the Great is leading. Monster Jam X10 with 942 points is sitting in second. Uh, so that is currently a 26-point lead for Troy the Great. Hercules Harrigan is third in the standings with 932 points. Dale 30 at 905. Dark Crypto with 904 points rounds out. The top five coming into the week. Uh, my fantasy team this week, I've got William Byron, Ty Gibbs, Tyler Reddick. No surprise there. They were my must-haves. I've got SVG in my garage to start the race today. Again, I mentioned he was one of my sleepers. I also got Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell. Uh, the head-to-head -head picks, I got Hamlin over Bush, Reddick over Larson, Chastain over Suarez, Bowman over Sindrick. Those are my picks for this week. In the booth, as always, today, Mike Joy, Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyers, you'll see throughout the rest of Fox's portion of the season. Joseph C3, thanks for tuning in. Greetings from Texas. Got a race in your home state today. If you're there, have fun. If you're not, have fun. We're going to be here having fun all day long. We're up to 50 likes on the stream, by the way. Our goal is 150. We had like over 160 in the Xfinity race yesterday. Uh, out of nowhere, really. Uh, so we should... Get to our goal of 150 today. We're a third of the way there, and the race hasn't started yet. So appreciate each and every one of you guys, uh, not only for tuning in every weekend, but hitting that like button. It helps streams out a ton. I mean, I think it goes to show. We hit our like goal in the first two streams, obliterated it, honestly, in the uh, practice qualifying stream. Got close in the truck race, but we still ended up getting to the goal of 100 likes, and we ended up having our most viewed Xfinity race stream of the year yesterday. Uh, I think as a result of how well the first two streams did, the algorithm and you guys smashing the like button, I think uh, helped draw some new people in. So uh, I have to obviously, you know, be on my best when I do these streams, but it also obviously helps when uh, you guys are tuning in every week and helping me out that way, hitting the subscribe button, hitting the like button. So uh, yeah, let's get there. I, we came into this stream just 74 subscribers away from 5,000. If we have a big day today, we could actually get the 5,000 subscribers on the channel. And I say we collectively. Yes, I'm the only one running the channel, operating this YouTube channel. But we, because you guys are uh, definitely a part of that, obviously contributing to the success. So um, if I ever say we, but when I promote the channel, that's what I mean. We meaning us, the uh, NASCAR YouTube family. 
One other thing we'll highlight here while we're waiting for the drop of the green flag for today's race was we'll highlight the point standings through these first five NASCAR Cup races in 2024. Kyle Larson and Martin Truex Jr. Are currently tied for the points lead. Kyle Larson has one win on the year. Truex does not. Larson's win at Vegas gives him the tiebreaker. So that is why he currently is the leader in points. Uh, as far as stage points this season as well, Larson has scored the most stage points of any driver so far this year through these first five races, 57 of those. He's got two stage wins, which is also tied for the most with Ty Gibbs, who got both of his stage wins at Bristol last week. And uh, for Kyle Larson, he's only got two top 10 finishes. That was his top five uh, last week at Bristol, finishing fifth. And then the win, obviously, at Vegas, like I already mentioned. Truex without a win this season. Tied for the points lead, sitting pretty good right now. Ty Gibbs also sitting pretty high in the points standings. A lot of drivers up here in contention for the regular season championship are still winless this year. So expect uh, them to be competing for wins at least for the next several weeks based off the success that they've had already this year. Like a Ty Gibbs, I think he could potentially go out win today. The Toyotas have been fast as of late, obviously. Uh, indicating Truex's success and why he's tied for the points lead. Ryan Blaney was the points leader going into Bristol last week, had an abysmal week, very few stage points, finished 16th, and he's starting deep in the field today. Again, the Fords look very off. I don't expect him to have a good day today, but he needs to have a good day. Maybe he could stay out, get some stage points. Uh, he has been one of those drivers through uh, the past couple of years that would stay out to get the stage points at the end of stages on the road courses, so I think that could help him stay in regular season championship contention into at least next week we get back to the short tracks and uh, get back to the ovals where he has ran well this year I think Ryan Blaney uh, should be fine so I expect Blaney and a lot of those Penske cars and the Fords in general to stay out get stage points today because they don't have the speed that's going to contend for the win with Chevy Toyota and that's the way they can kind of mitigate the blow I guess this weekend by way of potential lost points. Denny Hamlin gained three positions in the standings after last week's win at Bristol, his first win of the season, only his first top five, and he only had one top ten in the first four races. All the laps led he had contributed to his success in that category, where now Denny Hamlin is the uh, driver who has led the most laps so far this season. So Denny Hamlin fifth in the standings, looking good. Chase Elliott, top 10 in points, along with Ross Chastain, Christopher Bell. Bell's got a win already this year. Tyler Reddick, still winless, ninth in points. And then, again, the two wins for Byron Suarez in the first two races of the year, with Byron winning the Daytona 500, Daniel Suarez winning at Atlanta. Behind that, the drivers right around the bubble in the early going of the standings that are on the inside looking out would be Alex Bowman, Brad Keselowski, Chris Buescher, John Undernemechek having a great start to the season. couple top 10s for him. He's 15th in points. And Kyle Busch is right on that 16th spot. Uh, he lost five positions of points after last week's race at Bristol, and he lost some spots the weekend before that at Phoenix where he did not have a good run as well. Michael McDowell just on the outside looking in, 12 points behind Bush coming into the day today, 17th overall in the standings. Bubba Walls, who was off to a great start this year through the first three race, races, had a bit of a dip in performance on the short tracks. He is now 18th in points. Uh, Chase Briscoe, 19th in the standings, right where he was going into last week. Eric Jones lost a couple spots. Cindric lost six positions, went from 15th in points to 21st. Joey Logano, I think, is the biggest uh, down spot of drivers who would expect to maybe be a perennial championship contender year in and year out. 26th in points is Logano. He's actually 30th, but gained four spots last week, but he didn't get many points on the cutoff line. He has 58 points behind Kyle Busch. I don't expect Busch to miss the playoffs, so I'd imagine that it would be somebody else on the cutoff line eventually. So with Logano obviously off to a bad start this season and not looking fast this weekend, he could be in danger here through these first six races of the year. And uh, again, full race worth of points out of first, nearly at least 58 points back. He's lucky he scored a lot of stage points at Daytona and Atlanta because if he didn't score a lot of stage points in those races when he had speed, he would be in a lot deeper trouble than what he already is right now. That glove penalty, by the way, it did not cost him any points. And he really got bailed out and still got stage points in stage one at Atlanta with having the uh, caution on lap two before he could have potentially lost another lap or so. He ended up wrecking later and not getting a good finish anyway, but he at least got some stage points in stage one. Salvaged something out of the day. Definitely could have been more worse for wear.
Austin Dillon, 30th in points, also not having a great season. He has qualified for the playoffs four times in his cup career, but doesn't uh, look to be the case so far this weekend. So we've got cars on the racetrack right now. Uh, obviously, they've already given the command to fire engines. We'll fire that leaderboard up on NASCAR.com, get the usual raw feed going. Hopefully, it's working out of the gate this weekend. And it is, wow, look at that. For the first time since the Daytona 500 for a cup race, the raw feed is working before lap one. <laughs> Thank you. It helps these streams out a ton. Oh, my goodness. All right, so we'll go through the starting lineup for today's Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. Again, the first road course race of the NASCAR Cup season. William Byron is mentioned on the pole. He's my pick to win the race. He's not the Vegas favorite, but he is my favorite. I think he'll go to victory lane, but his competitors start there with him. Ty Gibbs looking for his first career win still has been hot. Three straight top 10 finishes coming into this race today. We'll see if Gibbs can get it done on the outside of the front row. Tyler Reddick, last season's Coda winner, starting inside of row number two, with Christopher Bell to his outside multiple-time road course winner in the Cup Series for Bell. Corey LaJoy's best start of the season on the inside of row number three for this race, and Ross Chastain to the outside of row three. He is one of the three Cup winners at Coda. He won here in 2022. Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin will line up in row four. Hamlin a winner last week. Truex still looking for his first win of the season. Chase Elliott, Bubba Wallace in row five. Elliott has not won since 2022, trying to get a win here today at a track he has won at before. He won the inaugural Cup Coda race in 2021. Austin Sindrick and Shane Van Gisbergen in row six. SVG, two top tens in his only two Cup starts, trying to go three for three in that statistical category today. Justin Haley and A.J. Allmendinger in row seven. A.J., a good road course ringer in the colleague extra entry, that number 13 car, non-chartered. Car, one of three non-chartered cars in the field today. Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch, the Kyle Kyle Show, back at row number eight. And row number nine, it'll be Alex Bowman, Carson Hosevar. Row 10, Daniel Suarez and Chris Busher. Austin Dillon, John Hunter Nemechek in row 11. Row 12, Kaz Grala, Ryan Priest. Kamui Kobayashi and Todd Gillen in row number 13. Kobayashi in the second of the... Uh, Excuse me, in the uh, second of the non-chartered entries in the field today for 2311 racing, so we'll have an extra Toyota in the field compared to usual. Michael McDowell and Ryan Blaney deep in the field back in row number 14. Row 15, Harrison Burton, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Josh Berry, and Chase Briscoe in row 16. Row 17, Daniel Hemrick, Zane Smith. Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski in row 18, uh, row 17, by the way, for Hemrick and Smith, if I said 18 there. That's row 17. Row 18 is Logano and Keselowski, both on the don't have list for this weekend, and uh, both starting very, very deep in the field. Timmy Hill, Eric Jones in row number 17. Timmy Hill would be that third non-chartered entry, an extra forward in the field. And Noah Gregson rounding out the field today, messed up his qualifying lap, and the S has had a penalty, so that resulted in a last place qualifying position for him. 39 cars in the field today. Again, three non-chartered entries. Uh, the scheduled distance for this race is 68 laps. And the stage splits, once I get it up on my screen, I took a screenshot of it earlier. I don't want to wait for the Fox graphic to come up. Come on now. I think there's 15 laps in stage one, but I'm just going to try to find it here first. <laughs> On my own end. Oh, I didn't take a screenshot of it. I thought I did. All right, I'll wait for Fox to cover it then. I'm, my bad on that one. I thought I had it in my uh, in my files. I did not. Checking pit road times right now. We should be going green soon. So I'll let you listen into the Fox broadcast for the next minute or so before we get to racing. RJ, you bought a car through Echo Park. Yes, Tell me about your experience. I had a lot of different options and variety to choose from. I had a 10 out of 10 experience. 50% of the cars at Echo Park are $25,000 or less. That's a real deal. What sticks out to me? She went above and beyond. That's what Echo Park is all about. Absolutely. Would recommend this dealership to anybody. You know what you're going to get to do now? Hop in this car and go for a pace car ride around the track. Awesome. Let's go. Let's do it. You can go to echopark.com to learn more. 
as we get set to go road racing in Texas. Let's take a closer look at the Cup Car Sequential Shifter with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Yeah, Mike, shifting will be the name of the game. That five-speed sequential shifter will get a workout with a driver shifting about 20 to 24 times a lap. Let's go to our Toyota Camry cutaway car, and we'll show you actually how this system works. You see the shift lever there. As we took the body off of our Camry, it is hooked to a shifter rod that goes through the rear firewall to the gearbox. Now, when you go back to the shift lever itself, you can just downshifting and upshifting. Now, to downshift, what you do getting in the corner, you go fourth, third, just keep moving ahead. They'll go to first gear here on this racetrack six to seven times a lap. To upshift, you just keep pulling it back. We'll go to fifth at least one time down that long back straightaway between 11 and 12. Mike, if you do the numbers 20 to 24 times a lap, that's about 1,400 times they'll be shifted today. What you have to be careful of if you're Shane Van Gisberg and uh, Larson, some of these guys that were in yesterday's race, that's an H pattern. Do not make a mistake and downshift this race car and blow the motor up. Well, seen it from four here. The other thing you got to be aware of is you're going to be wore out because it is a busy day inside of that car. There's the Toyota Camry XSE that leads the field, due in showroom soon. Brand new look. They didn't let Michael drive that one, did they? I don't think so. Okay, good. He might not pull in when we get ready That's, to go yeah. clean. Pull a Richard Petty. Well, yesterday was a beautiful, sunny, warm spring day, and then the clouds came in. Uh, winds earlier gusted to 35 miles an hour. They have calmed down to about 18 now, above 70 degrees, but there's a nice cloud cover. No suntan oil today. Love this racetrack, Kevin. I mean, absolutely beautiful, world-class facility everywhere you look. 15, 15, and 38. Those are the lap lengths of the three stages. In this race, you'll need fuel every 22 to 24 laps, and three drivers will go to the rear. Uh, Chris Busher had uh, a steering rack problem. They had to change that. Ryan Priest over-revved his engine. They changed the valve springs, uh, and Timmy Hill will drop back one row. Now we've got a new restart zone at Circuit of the Americas, and it's located just at the exit of turn 20, the final turn on the course. Yeah, and they're going to use that right off the bat here, and the thing that has changed, the starter and the start-finish line will not be the one starting the race. When they get to this restart box and you get to the last line, it is game on. So they'll be two and three, four wide before they get to the start-finish line and shoot that thing straight up the hill to let the action begin. Then you see the repaves, right? We have new repavement off of one, down in 9, 10, and 11. Passing zones, folks, getting into turn 12, very important corner. Keep an eye on that. A lot happens there. William Byron and Ty Gibbs coming up to turn 19. Now look at that big wide area outside of turn 19. That is not out of bounds. Out of bounds only in the S's, turns three to six. So, I mean, if it's paved, you can go there. I think on the restart zone, Kevin, going back to that for just a second, the one thing you'll notice right off the bat, there's no longer a rule where you have to get to the start finish line before you can fan out. There'll be three, four, five wide. As soon as you get past the restart zone, you're gonna see it right here. Everybody firing the throttle, green flag in the air. Byron leads the field to the start finish line and we're underway in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. Already looking to the inside is Tyler Reddick. will back out of it. Byron is going to get the lead clearly through turns one and two. All clean. Reddick going to try to get back to the outside into turn two on William Byron. But a battle up and now dives in line behind him in the S's as a run single file there, which is definitely going to be the most treacherous area of the racetrack to go side by side today. We'll see on the later race restarts how they navigate through there. A couple cars are side by side through the S's off the initial start here. Looked like uh, Bubba Wallace and uh, tough to tell... Denny Hamlin, it looked like, was uh, also side-by-side -side with him there. Coming out of the S's, Hamlin and Chastain are now 2-by-2, two two, battling for 6th. First half of the lap, and lap 1 in the books. Just getting into turn number 11 right now, before the longest straightaway of the racetrack between 11 and 12. 3 wide going Chastain underneath Hamlin and LaJoy. Passes them both, great move by Ross. Moving up two positions in one corner there. A couple more cars. Three wide further back and a lot of contact around Corey LaJoy. And uh, looked like maybe Wallace in the 23 had gotten into him as well. They're going to lose quite a few positions. Both cars started inside the top 10 and are falling behind in a hurry. 
Huge gaggle of cars still going two by two into turn 12. That back half of the field is an absolute scrum right now. Kyle Busch, Austin Sindrick door to door. That is for position just outside the top 10. Actually, right inside the top 10, around 8th and ninth place is that battle behind Chase Elliott. Cindric looks like he's got a little bit of damage to the nose of his race car. Might have gotten into the back of somebody in turn 1 on that initial start. Byron quickly gapping Tyler Reddick at the very front of the field. Already over a 1 second lead. Chastain and Denny Hamlin battling for position on the racetrack. Main straightaway, they're side by side. Chastain on the outside, Hamlin going to be on the bottom as they head towards turn one. Hamlin is uh, going to duck in line behind him. Chastain beat him back to the throttle. Denny going to try to outbreak him, going below the bumps in that first turn. Couple cars on pit road for an unscheduled stop. right now booty barker his crew chief said let's just make sure the right front is clear make sure everything is clear take your time here let's get it right so we can continue contending they really feel like they have a good piece here guys they qualified 10 get some new tires on it top it off a little and down he goes yeah, no problem. that initial start there was heavy contact between several drivers in the back half of the top 10 i guess trick's got a piece of that contact with lajoy and wallace as well uh, Corey LaJoy did not come to pit row for an unscheduled stop. He remains on the track in 19th, while Martin Church Jr. and Bubba Wallace just pitted, so they are now at the tail end of the lead lap. And LaJoy sideways getting down into turn 11. They cut away from the camera right as he was sliding. I don't know, maybe he's got a steering issue or he'd had contact with somebody else from before. Harrison Burton's around also. Looks to be right around turn 12. Wild start in the back half of the field there. Ty Gibbs trying to stay out in front of Christopher Bell in the 20. They battle for third on the racetrack. Otherwise, mostly spaced apart through the top five positions. And Harrison Burton actually went around in turn 11. Turn 12, we saw Corey LaJoy obviously get sideways. Still don't know exactly uh, what ended up in the aftermath of that happening, but he... Uh, doesn't seem to have lost a position, at least on our leaderboard. Uh, lost a few of them from the end of lap one to the end of lap two. He went from 18th to 22nd. Already a 1.2 second lead for Byron over Reddick. Uh, make that about a 1.7 second lead. The intervals on Fox's uh, leaderboard kind of shake around quite a bit from corner to corner based on what part of the racetrack they are on around this 3.4 mile road course layout. But again, Byron leading the way. He's got three Toyotas behind him, followed by another Chevy. Sindrick, the highest running Ford, moved up to 7th from the initial start after qualifying in 11th. A.J. Allmendinger from 14th has gone to 9th. Shane Van Gisbergen right around where he started dropped a spot from 12th to 13th. Some of the movement there in the back half of the top 10 to just outside the top 10 in the early couple of laps. Again, only on lap 3 of 68 to this point, your top 5, William Byron, with a second and a half lead over Tyler Reddick. Ty Gibbs is still in third, 2.6 seconds off the lead. Christopher Bell in fourth, 3.3 seconds back. And Ross Chastain is 4.6 seconds off the lead in fifth. Look to see some of those drivers that were at the very back of the field. Uh, Logano's moved up about eight positions already to 28th. Keselowski still right around where he started, 33rd. Chris Buescher, who dropped to the rear of the field and started the race, is up to 32nd. And again, Truex Wallace, after that lap one contact, have fallen back a little bit. There's definite damage on the nose of the two of Sindrick, as uh, stated on lap one. It looked like he had gotten into the back of somebody in turn one. And uh, it's pretty caved in. Honestly, the next-gen car doesn't fold like that uh, very easily, but he's got quite a bit of damage to the nose. Obviously, running in seventh, it doesn't seem to be hurting him too badly, all things considered, as of right now. Of 
Corey LaJoy going wide again. After a fifth place starting spot, he has fallen back quite a bit. 1.6 second lead still for Byron. Actually, it looks like it's grown up over two seconds now. Just over a two second lead. Byron almost about a second quicker lap, really. Over these first couple laps, we'll see how his tires hold up over the course of the long haul. We haven't seen a lot of tire fall off in the road courses with the next gen, but... As we saw last week, it at least changed with the first traditional short track race of the year. So uh, I don't think we'll see quite that kind of tire wear today, but interested to see exactly how much we end up getting by the end of it. It looked like LaJoy about made more contact with Kamui Kobayashi. LaJoy has been all over the place in these early laps, losing 20 positions in just over three laps so far. Loses another to Kobayashi for 24th. Noah Gregson from last place starting position is up about a dozen positions. Good run for him early. 15 laps in this first stage. So we will definitely see that pit window open between three to four laps to go in this stage. Pit road closes when the race leader gets to the start finish line with two to go in the stage. So expect some of the drivers at the top of the field to sacrifice stage points. Uh throughout stage one and stage two to get the better track position on the restarts for the beginning of that following stage in accordance to the pit sequence. And the final stage is long enough today compared to what you saw in the truck and Xfinity race the last couple of, or I should say between yesterday, the final stage of the Xfinity and truck race was short enough that they did not have to pit again for fuel or tires in the final stage, even with short pitting stage two. That will not be the case today. The final stage is... Just over 30 laps, so they will have to make a pit stop at some point in time there. Chase Elliott slipping and sliding around with his rear tires. Looks to be a little loose as he puts a battle to Kyle Busch. Looks to be for about 8th place on the racetrack. Massive gap right now between Chastain in 5th and Denny Hamlin in 6th. Hamlin's got Cindric looking for a pass on him into turn 20. Cindric can out break Denny Hamlin. Hamlin dives in line behind him. Olmendinger now looking for a pass on the 11 as Cindric is up to sixth place. Five positions gained for Austin already, and even with the damage, it is not holding him back, at least to this point. Late breaking on the outside of turn one for Olmendinger. Trying to beat Denny Hamlin on the inside lane now to turn two. He's going to get it. Hamlin dropping backwards over the last several laps. Kyle Busch is right there now to put a battle to Denny as well. First full screen commercial break on Fox's telecast right now. So we'll go through the full field running order on lap four of 68. And today's Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. William Byron already out to a 2.6 second lead over Tyler Reddick in second. Ty Gibbs is third. Christopher Bell fourth. Ross Chastain fifth. Austin Sindrick in 6th, Denny Hamlin 7th, A.J. Allmendinger 8th, Kyle Busch 9th, Chase Elliott is 10th, Kyle Larson in 11th, 12th place for Daniel Suarez, Shane Van Gisberg in 13th, Justin Haley 14th, and Alex Bowman 15th. Michael McDowell already up to 16th, 11 spots gained for him, Austin Dillon is 17th, Chase Briscoe 18th, Carson Hosevar 19th, Todd Gillen is 20th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 21st, Ryan Blaney 22nd, Kamui Kobayashi 23rd, Corey LaJoy, 24th. John Hunter Nemechek, 25th. Joey Logano in 26th. 27th for Noah Gregson. 28th place for Zane Smith. Chris Buescher, 29th. Eric Jones, 30th. 31st for Kaz Grala. Ryan Priest, 32nd. Josh Berry, 33rd. Brad Kiselowski, 34th. Daniel Hemrick, 35th. Harrison Burton, 36th. Timmy Hill, 37th. Martin Tricks Jr., 38th. And Bubba Wallace, 39th. And that is your full field running order, again, through the first five laps of this race. You're listening live on KRC to the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. 70 likes on the stream. Our goal again is 150. So hit that like button if you guys haven't done so yet. Vote in the comment section in the uh, poll we have open there for who you think is going to win the race today. And again, a lot of you say somebody other than Byron Gibbs or Reddick will win right now, but you can change your vote. And again, that poll will close at the end of Stage 2. Good thing I didn't have Truex or Wallace on my fantasy team. 
Drop it back early. The fantasy teams, they're kind of tough here because obviously with the stage cautions back now, the drivers you're going to take who are going to contend for the win, you know, like me putting Byron Red at Gibbs in, you know they're not going to stay out to get stage points. So you're banking on them to get a good finish, but the stage points aren't going to be there. And uh, in this case, you know, maybe you go after a guy like, a, you know, Ryan Blaney that's probably going to stay out, get stage points, but not finish well. Maybe in hopes there's some late race cautions and he maybe gets a top 15. You have a decent point stay out of him. You know, you just, you, you don't know. There's a couple different ways you can go about it for sure. I went about it by the way of just trying to get the guy who's going to get the best finish possible because they have the speed in their cars this weekend and they've proven in road course races, you know, in the past that they've been able to do it as well. Bundle home and auto and save. Five laps completed, Circuit of the Americas. William Byron leading in his Hendrick Chevrolet, still by 2.7 seconds over the Toyota of Tyler Reddick. Now, penalties for cutting the track in turns three, four, five, and six. The yeses, uh, John Hunter Nemechek has been nabbed at turn number four. When that happens under green, you have to do a pass-through penalty. If it happened under caution, he'd have to restart tail end of the longest line. And if you don't serve your penalty before the end of the stage or end of the race, well, 30-second penalty added to your race time. Uh, so Nemechek will drive down at pit road speed. There's a pass for second. I knew it was coming. Gibbs has been a little bit faster than Reddick in second. Got the pass done. Byron obviously leading this race, laying some good lap times down. But that Gibbs boy, he's coming, folks. All right, six laps complete. Uh, let's take a look at what's on the menu, sponsored by Cracker Barrel. And Mike, it has all to do with strategy. And remember, stage breaks are back at the road courses in 2024. So flip the stages. Pit before stage one and stage two ends. Remember, they close pit road with two to go at the end of those two stages. Another option. I saw the 12 car do this two years ago. Pit at the end of stage one. Stay out at the end of stage two. And then when your fuel window opens to make it to the end of the race, that 44 or so, Pit for fuel. I think they'll start crafting a way to make this on two stops. But regardless of what strategy, when that fuel window opens to make it to the end, lap 44, around 24 to go, pit for fuel, and possibly, guys, pack the pit equipment up. You might be done. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Six complete. Ty Gibbs uh, working on Tyler Reddick and making the pass for second. Put him another second behind William Byron. So the lead now, three and a half. Well, you called it, Clinton, as we go through 8, 9, and 10 right here into 11. That's a really good section for Ty Gibbs, and we're going to start to get a good feel for what the lap time is compared uh, to William Byron, Byron, our leader, from Ty Gibbs as we come around this time. See him look down, probably making some adjustments to his brake bias knob, going all the way down from 11 to 12, all the way up to fifth gear, brake about the time you get to this new asphalt right here has a little elevation change that you go in the apex of this corner, kind of falls down the hill right there, and then it switches back to the old asphalt right here, uh, going inside this stadium section to where it's just really, really slick compared to everything else that you've done for the last couple corners. Chevrolet leading, Toyota's 2-3-4. The first four is Austin Cedric in seven. Here comes Christopher Bell. Yeah, and this through this carousel section right here. It's just manage the slide of the car. Just give it as much throttle as it'll take without chatter in the front or the back tires and get it over to turn 19. But I think Tyler Reddick is, he obviously knows that Christopher Bell and, and Ty Gibbs are better than him right now. Just kind of moves over. Yeah, I think that, obviously he's, he's shocked by that. It's shocking me as much as it probably is him. I thought he would march right to the front. Chuck with Regan Smith. Mike, Michael McDowell traditionally very, very good on the road courses. Indy road course winner from one year ago. Struggles this weekend, though. He has not had the grip that he anticipated so far in the weekend, but up 11 spots early on in the race. Team been coaching him up, telling him turn 11 is where he's losing the spots. Michael's been quiet about the car right now. Keep an eye on him as he's moving up through the field. Michael sharing our Ford performance camera array, and that includes a foot cam. Well, he's in a great spot to start looking at that foot cam as it goes through turn two into turn three. And this is going to show you the rhythm section through the S's. You just see him just gently touch the brake and downshift into four. And now you just try to manage the speed uh, down to the bottom of six and over to seven. 
That's turn seven that he's in right now. You hear the, the car slam into the ground. Don't overdrive turn eight. You've got to hook this lift to stay inside of the dirt. Jump over turn seven right here. Now he's headed down to the heavy braking section in, in turn 11. You'll see heavy, heavy braking downshift. Look how busy he is. It's all day, Clay. I mean, this is just a busy, busy track with all the shifting and heavy braking. Your feet are sore. Your back is sore. Your neck is sore. There is, it's a very, very physical racetrack for the drivers, and, and you just have so much to do all day long. 39 drivers in this race, 38 of them break with their left foot. <laughs> well, the one, guy, the one yeah. guy that doesn't break with his left foot is uh, SVG, Shane Van Gisbergen. And we, we, we saw him come to Chicago and, and put on a clinic in the, in the rain. And we'll show you some of that as, as we go through the day. Right now, uh, Shane is, is running 13th, had a heck of a day yesterday. Uh, running the Xfinity race and shifting that age pattern uh, on a road course for the first time. So it's been uh, it's been a good weekend, not the finish that he wanted, but uh, I think he's he's going to be in the mix before we get done with today. Jamie? And I talked to his crew chief, Travis Mack, about that heel-toe breaking. He said that's just what he's always done. He's very comfortable with it, and because of that, they have to spend a lot of time working on the pedal placement of the clutch, the brake, and the throttle, getting exactly where he wants so he can well, I think that's a really old school way of, of learning how to road race. You used to have to heel, heel and toe uh, everything together so, because you had to use the clutch. And once the transmissions really evolved into, into what they are today, uh, it was just a, today it's a sequential, but you didn't have to use the clutch to upshift or downshift. And the fact that he grew up racing on the other side of the earth. Right? Yeah. I mean, he grew up in a whole different deal, Australia, supercar racing, on the, even on the wrong side of the car, folks. A lot of differences here today for Jane Van Gisbergen. Seven to go in stage one. Ty Gibbs eating in to William Byron's lead. You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stress is just melted away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sorts you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. Every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills... I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You got to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So. Ah, mm. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. You're invited to a Texas-sized party. NASCAR drives into the Lone Star State for a three-day trip ride that only Texas Motor Speedway can deliver. Busher, Elliott, and Larson battle it out for a killer hat and a sweet trophy. A 38 special rocks the track, and Lone Star side shows you have to see to believe. Join us April 12th to the 14th for the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 400. This is more than a race. It's a no limits experience. When I was your age, we never had anything like this. What? Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi that works all over the house. Even the basement. The basement? So I can finally throw that party and invite Shannon Barnes. Dreams do come true. Xfinity gives you reliable Wi-Fi with wall-to-wall -wall coverage on all your devices, even when everyone is online. Maybe we'll even get married one day. I wonder what I'll be doing. Probably still living here with mom and dad. Fast, reliable speeds right where you need them. That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi on the Xfinity 10G network. A new era of spring football kicks off. Saturday, the USFL champs versus the XFL champs. QFL kickoff weekend, Saturday at 1 on Fox and Sunday on ESPN. Order Pizza Hut now and get a free large pizza later. That's a free pizza on your next order. So you can pizza now, then pizza again. Free pizza means your next dinner is covered. Your future self will thank you. Get it while it's hot. Only at Pizza Hut. What does fearless look like? Like trading pain with a champion? Find out for yourself. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Everything's bigger in Texas. Seems like everything's faster, too. 20 turns of Circuit of the Americas. Nine laps in. William Byron's lead cut to 2.3 seconds uh, by Ty Gibbs. And 
kind of varies depending on which corner they're in between two and two and a half seconds as they go around this course but Gibbs has him in sight yeah well Ty is a little bit better than Byron but Bell is way better than them both it just depends on how you hit the lap now behind these three Tyler Reddick who started third running fourth Josh guys it's a shift in who's considered the road course king in the cup series as of late it really has been tyler reddick you saw him get those important wins on road courses including here last year and it's on a mantle that his crew chief says he really likes it he takes pride in it he's gotten much better at this type of racing now today he's lost his spot already since the start Five to go in stage one. The stage lengths 15, 15, and 38 laps. They've come some more into his lead, Kevin. Yeah, both both uh, Ty Gibbs and Christopher Bell, we, we felt like had probably the best long-run cars yesterday in practice. And that was the question that we had about William Byron is, is how long would his car hold on? Looks like the two Gibbs cars behind him are going to hold on a little bit better than his right now. Catching him's one thing, passing him's another I was just, stage in. I was just going to say, he's got the track position. And you heard Larry tell us, maybe, the more than likely, probably pit before that stage in. That's going to be a variable to keep in mind as well. NASCAR control is usually right alongside us up here uh, on the second floor at most of these racetracks, but here they're down on the first floor in a room with no windows, with more than 70 TV screens aimed at different parts of the course so they can officiate this, and to help manage whether someone cuts the course in the S's, they have software designed by a Spanish company uh, that provides it to Formula One for managing drivers who stray outside of track limits. So that comes up on the computer from that software. An official reviews it, sends it over to the race director and series director. They review it and issue penalties as required. It's very technical, but there's still, of course, that human element in control. Well, well. While they're controlling the race there, these two boys are banging doors. Uh, 47, and now you see another car shoot down in there. Three, three wide. wide. And Kobe Hashi. Todd Gilliland down in there put them three wide. That's three aggressive race car drivers. Stenhouse, Jr., Briscoe, Gilliland on the outside. Three wide going in at 12. I cannot believe all three of them come out the other end. Great battle there from 20th on back to 26th. All in very close contact. Kobayashi, he's got the same same car that these guys up front are driving. So as I would say as they make more laps today, if he can keep all the fenders on the car and keep it on track and not make any mistakes on pit road, he's probably going to move forward, wouldn't you say, Clint? Absolutely. See some guys on pit road already, just like we talked about before this stage in, getting set up, need the track position. Brian Blaney and Chase Briscoe, Joey Logano on pit road. Uh, so is Chris Busher and Ryan Priest. Uh, Briscoe owes a pass-through penalty for cutting the course at turn four. And you're going to hear us talk about that all day as we get fed that information on the, on the penalties through the S's. Knock some more out of their lead. You can see them getting a lot bigger in Byron's rearview mirror. That last time by, Byron, 213 with a 36. They're 212, 99, and an 88 behind him and Bell. Definitely catching him. So if you pit before the end of the stage, looking forward to the end of the race and the chance of a race win as Larson and Hamlin battle, do you have to choose between stage points and track position at the finish, or can you do both? Well, I think you can get a little bit of both. If you're one of these front cars, maybe it'll cycle through to, to get you a tail end of the top ten, but there's definitely going to be two different uh, agendas in, in the middle of this race. And some of the guys that are going to say, hey, we don't have a chance to win today, let's stay out in one of these two stages and, and try to get some points to protect ourselves from the day of, of having a bad day. Uh, we saw that yesterday in the Xfinity race uh, with Riley Herbs. He stayed out, won a stage, got a playoff point, got 10 points, uh, got good stage points in the first uh, stage, and then wrecked. And that's what you get those stage points for, is to try to protect your finish when you, when you think it might not be good. Playoff leaderboard in your lower left as Byron and Gibbs run 1.8 seconds apart. 
Bell looking in? I also think it, it depends on what kind of, there you see Reddick dipping down to the pit entry here. Going to be the first one of the front runners on pit road. Josh, what do you got? Terry, concern for the 45 right now is the stadium and the carousel. He said he's just going to get four tires of fuel to try and help him out, guys. Well, as you see Tyler Reddick come into his pit box right here, this is probably the narrowest pit road on the circuit. This is a really tough pit road to navigate when there's a lot of cars coming in and out of the racetrack. And while you're in your pit box, you don't have a lot of room to the right side of the pit box because the pit boxes are so narrow. Several of them, Almondinger here, FBG, you see Larson in the pits, Denny Hamlin was in, Kyle Busch. Yep, too many to call. In fact, it'd be easier to name the drivers who stayed out. Well, we know our first uh, first four cars stayed out on the three, or three of the first four cars stayed out on the racetrack to, to keep running. Nine drivers stayed out. Uh, Truex is back in. The reason he pitted earlier after that contact was that he shattered the rim on a wheel. It wasn't a tire going down, uh, but part of the wheel was gone, so he had to come in early. Yeah, we see a lot of these cars that are coming onto pit road uh, to, to get uh, their tires changed. A lot of them have the Goodyears rubbed off the side and tire marks on the rocker panels. Very physical racetrack up at the top of the hill and, and at the beginning parts of these laps. Lermack? Yeah, you look about the le top nine or ten, they have not pitted yet. Now, the only way you can still pit is if you're up there like William Byron or Ty Gibbs or Christopher Bell because pit road will close this time when the leader crosses the start-finish line. Remember what I talked about, create a two-stop strategy. There is a way that you can run to about lap 20 to 22. Make a pit stop, which would be after stage one in, and then pit again 44 to 46, and that's a two-stop race. That's three different segments of this race. So the first nine have not pitted. Neither have Hemrick, Keslowski, and Grollum. It appears uh, most everybody else has been to pit road other than Timmy Hill. Well, here they come, Mike. Two of the first three. Bell, Bell stayed out. He's going to go after the points. The other two are going to go after the, the winning strategy or, or what they think is the winning strategy to put themselves in the best position to win. Regan? Ross Chassain, one of those cars going after the winning strategy. Phil Surgeon said at the start of the day this is what he would do if he felt like the car was good enough to do it. Right now he's a little bit too loose through all the right-handers. What, what's help? Through the right-handers, especially the carousel. Jamie? Mike Gibson at 54 had just turned the fastest lap that last lap. Said he's a little too tight on the left-handers. A four-tire stop here, but filling up with the airport fuel. Meanwhile, the 24 started on pole, but all the laps until now. No adjustments for him. Fresh tires is all. So they all pitted coming to two laps to go, so a legal stop as uh, the pit road would close. Oh, oh man. Big lockup from Ty Gibbs out of the pits on cold tires right there. It's really rough on the inside of the racetrack right there, Clint. And I think he went in there too far, and as he came over one of those bumps, the front tires locked up. Yeah, that was massive. Definitely caught him off guard. So Christopher Bell out on uh, cruise control, 17 seconds ahead of Daniel Suarez as we come to the end of stage number one. And Larry's outlined the varying strategies drivers can employ. I guess if you're Joe Gibbs racing, you've got four good contending cars. Put them on different strategies and let's see what happens. Well, Christopher Bell's already won, right? So yes. he, he can, now he's, point. now the rich get richer. Yeah. So he's already won. Now he can take a play, he's going to get a playoff point to, to add to that playoff total, and he's going to get 10 points today to work towards the regular season championship. So I know Clint says points don't matter, but they do uh, in, in a lot of different ways. Every different Everybody's got a different agenda. Now you've got Daniel Suarez. He stayed out. McDowell stayed out. Cindric. Dylan, you know Dylan needs points. He's going to stay out and get those stage points. Lots of different agendas are available and on the table for a road course race. And Stenhouse to that group. Now, the drivers that stayed out that are probably not going to score stage points, uh, Hemrick, Kozlowski, and Grollum, they're going to be just out of the top ten as we come toward the end of stage one. Well, the good part about this is we're going to get to watch Christopher Bell come through the pack. So that, that is going to be exciting because he has a he has a race-winning car, and a lot of times you just have to choose one of these stages to say, okay, I'm going to go after points in this stage or the next stage. So some of these guys, uh, including Christopher Bell, as you see him go through turn one, have, have chosen to, to try to win this stage, and, and the other guys have pitted and said, okay, we'll take our chances for the end or the next stage. 
build his career on dirt and in open wheel cars. A lot of open wheel experience and trophies, but he's a two-time road course winner in the NASCAR Cup Series. Jamie. Well, part of his strategy is because he loves his car so much. He said, it's driving great. I don't need any adjustments. They said, we're in position. Let's just stay out and go for this stage win. He also reported that he lost fuel pressure. And they reported to him, hey, that happened here. No concern. Have you guys heard of that on the road courses, Clint and Kevin? Well, usually when I'm out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely been on that side of the fence as well. Not a good feeling. Well, Christopher Bell, he's been he's been fast every week. For the most part, we saw him have a little bit of trouble at Las Vegas, but uh, they, these these gift cars have, have been lights out. And now today, they've given themselves a, a chance on different strategy to, to take the stage points, to take the put themselves in position to have a chance to win. And uh, so, two different strategies from the Gibbs team. One element that I heard Jamie say is Ty Gibbs ran his fastest lap right there at the end of this uh, cycle on tires. That tells you that the tire fall off is not there. That's not in existence. That puts strategy into the game in a big way today. It can really shake up the outcome of this race. An untimely caution will lay it right in your lap or take it from somebody else. So Bell will come around to get the green and white checkered flag to end stage number one. NASCAR will keep the track under the green flag until the 10th place car comes to the line. Currently, that's Ross Chastain, 42 seconds back of the race uh, leader because of air stops. Green checker for Christopher Bell. Second stage win this year for Bell and his first ever at Circuit of the Americas. Suarez, Vidal, Cindric, and Dillon will give you the top ten and the stage point earners when we come back. Christopher Bell is your stage one winner. All right, so Christopher Bell staying out to get the stage points and the playoff point here for stage one. 19 seconds behind him is Daniel Suarez in second. Michael McDowell, as I mentioned, was probably going to be one of those drivers to stay out, get the stage points, having the poor qualifying position uh, as he did. He is going to be third at the end of the stage. Austin Cindric fourth. Austin Dillon, 5th. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 6th. William Byron, 7th. Byron would have been the first of the drivers that did hit pit road. Ty Gibbs, 8th. He also hit pit road. Tyler Reddick, ninth, And Ross Chastain, 10th. Uh, those drivers all ended up pitting from the top 5 when green flag pit stops had begun. And they all still get some sort of stage points here in Stage 1. Drivers who did not hit pit road that didn't get stage points would be Hemrick Keselowski and Timmy Hill. So Christopher Bell going to pick up that playoff point, his first stage win of the season. As you heard from Mike Joy over the course of the broadcast. Let's see here. Uh, sorry, second stage win of the season for Christopher Bell. Eighth in points coming into the day, so getting the 10 regular season points is pretty big. It was 37 points out of first coming into the day. Second half of the raw feed? Yeah, I got you. Scroll down. There you have it. Get a glimpse of it real quick. Maybe some of your favorite drivers are in there. Up to 77 likes on the stream. Sorry I had to dip out there for a little bit. I tried taking the dog out before the stream started, and uh, she didn't go. And I took her out about 2.30 or so, so I had a feeling at some point early in the race that that was going to have to happen. Uh, so there we go. Shouldn't have to worry about that the rest of the day. Rest of the stream, I should say. Well, <laughs> she'll have to go outside again at some point today, but uh, hopefully not during the stream. Yep, Christopher Bell wins stage one. It's going to put him pretty deep in the field, though, so we'll see how he'll be able to try to navigate and get his way through. JFB underscore 48. Thanks for tuning in. Chastain has good pace. Yeah, he does. Still a lot 
more road to run. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. And by Ford, built Ford proud. Aerial coverage at Circuit of the Americas is provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Top of your screen, you see the stage point winners in uh, positions 1 through 10. Bell with the second stage win of the year. Suarez, McDowell, Dylan Stenhouse, all of whom stayed out. Byron Gibbs, Reddick, Chastain, all of whom pitted. And Daniel Hemrick, who stayed out, has not pitted. He got the final stage point. Jamie? Well, Mike, in 2023, 2311 took their pit department in-house, no longer using Joe Gibbs Racing. Now in their second year together, Tyler Reddick's team is really hitting their stride. So let's meet Team 45. No, I wouldn't say that. Who said? Houston Stamper, front tire changer, former college wide receiver. Just started my 19th season. My best victories are my kids at home and my wife. Devin Del Rico, rear tire changer, up in Marlboro, Maryland, two-time Xfinity Series champion. Wade Moore, Cleveland, North Carolina, tire carrier, former player in the Washington Nationals organization, proud dad to Sawyer, Sturgill, and Jackson. Nathan Ricketts, Jackman, Holland, Michigan, Central Michigan, a linebacker. Ryan Deal, gas man, former soccer player, 2017 NASCAR Cup Series champion with Furniture Row Racing and Martin Truex Jr. Proud dad to Gage and Quinn. Quite varied backgrounds, and there's Billy Scott, the crew chief, for 23-11, four career victories, and he's been crew chief for Reddick since 2023. Let's have a look at their pit stop earlier as uh, Reddick was the first of the leaders to pit. Yeah, I think that the great part about all these graphics and information is just how important these guys that are changing these tires and putting the fuel in and calling the shots up on the pit box. There's so much more to it than just the car and the driver. We see Austin Sendrick in, in the pits here. He had some pretty heavy damage on the nose, so they, they know that they've got some time on this particular lap to, to work on their car. Bubba Wallace, the same thing. We talked about the toe in in the front of the car being knocked out. They're trying to get those front tires straightened back up. All right, 17 laps complete. We're at the end of stage one, getting ready to start stage two with the all-new Toyota Camry XSE leading the field. And the Toyota Christopher Bell in front. Now, the front five cars have not yet made a stop. Will they come in during a stage break? Will they wait until we get going in stage two? Well, if these guys sitting on the box with their tires red and everything else are an indication, I'd say all systems say yes. All systems go. They'll be coming. Task, that was exactly what the doctor ordered for an Austin Dillon, uh, McDowell, Suarez. Those guys were looking for stage points. They got it. Maybe not Suarez. You know, Suarez has got to win in, in the bank. you got to remember that, too. Well, a guy like uh, Austin Sendrick is... You know, he got his stage points and immediately pitted. They knew they were in big trouble, and they might not get anything else out of their day because of the damage that they have on the front of their car. And Michael McDowell probably looking for track position. Here's a veteran road racer, very aggressive driver. Didn't have a great qualifying effort. Flipped him up to uh, the top five here to complete stage one. And we'll see what kind of strategies employed when pit road opens. Well, the day's getting better. We started 27, did you see there? Third in the stage, running third, much better. 24 cars they passed there. Did 11 of it under green. Wow, listen up. Is that Almendinger saving gas under caution? Yeah, and you're always, you always want to save gas because anytime you can have less time for the fueler plugged in to, to put gas in that car, the better off you are. And here come some of them. Suarez and Dillon are in. Well, let's crank it up for these pit stops. Wait, wait, go, 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 go
So again, Christopher Bell won the first stage, and he stayed out of the pits. A uh, couple of guys that actually ended up not pitting before the end of the last stage stayed out. So I think what they're going to end up doing here is they're going to try to make this race on two stops. Uh, they obviously did not pit before the end of the last stage, so Bell figured, hey, maybe I can go out, get the stage win, stay out of the pits, save fuel under caution, and then pit early into stage two, knowing that a lot of the other drivers who you're going to be competing for the win with are going to be pitting before the end of stage two. So you could cycle back out in front of a again. That would lead to you having to save fuel under that next caution. Maybe you get another yellow at some point in time in between there or in the final stage to save fuel. And you can hopefully make it as soon as the window opens to make it to the end on the last stop it is what I have to guess. Uh, right around 20 to 22 laps is a fuel window. It's a 68 lap race, so you'd expect to have to save probably three to four laps of fuel from the start of the race to make it on two stops. But I believe that is what Christopher Bell is going to try to do here uh, to keep his track position and get the stage points. Um, we'll see if he can keep the track position on the race start. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of tire fall off today, but he is going to be on about 15 lap older tires here. Uh, by way of green flag laps. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see if he can hold on on this restart, at least until he ends up having to pit again. And then when he pits, he's going to be at the back of the field, and then he can just run some clean laps from there, uh, save some fuel, just make sure that you don't go lap down, I guess, before the end of the next stage. Well, you're going to have to run pace, obviously, to get out ahead of when Byron and Gibbs and all those guys end up hitting. So I guess he can't just save as soon as he comes out of the pits. But, uh, yeah, we get one or two cautions for incident in this race. I think he could actually make this strategy work. If we don't get any cautions for incident, it's going to be tight for him to make it on two stops. But I think that's what they're going to try to do out of this strategy. Dominic Alari, thanks for tuning in. The Cooper still pulling for Kyle Busch. Again, our poll is going to end at the end of stage two for who you think will win. Still somebody thinks other, uh, still a lot of you guys, I should say, think uh, somebody other than Byron Gibbs or Reddick will win. The three favorites have less than 20% of the votes. The poll through the Xfinity race and the truck race is pretty tight between almost all four options, but today that does not seem to be the case. 138 votes have been casted so far. Uh, right around 100 concurrent viewers watching. Appreciate each and every one of you tuning in for another Sunday afternoon and throughout all of this weekend's NASCAR coverage. Truck Series will be off next week, so we'll just have the NASCAR Xfinity and NASCAR Cup Series streams for Richmond. NASCAR Cup Race will be next Sunday, Xfinity Race next Saturday, and we also have Cup Practice and Qualifying streamed live for you on this channel, and that will be taking place Saturday as well. I have the start times a little bit later in the stream. I'll uh, find those and let you guys know what the streaming schedule is going to be for next weekend. But until then, here is uh, some more of the broadcast leading up to the game. Christopher Bell and Michael McDowell, who did not pit, are on the front row for this restart. Now, in days past, if you ran low on fuel pressure, there's a switch you could flip and then get yourself to pit for gas. That switch is no longer... Uh, an option for these drivers, and it's a long way around should you run out. However, I'm sure the teams have it figured well, and we'll get updates on the two leaders after this restart. Yeah, I pretty much gave you guys the intel of what I think they're going to do, and I would imagine that that is probably what they'll tell you as well. But until then, green flag is in the air. We'll start stage two off, and we'll see how Bell and McDowell and the old tires are going to be able to hold on. Byron on the inside of row two, the first on fresh. Going to take it three wide to the inside for the lead. He's trying to get there before Gibbs gets there. So he can maintain that track position out ahead of the field. Byron had the best short run pace in the first stage. Bell comes out with the race lead through turns one and two. And now into the S's. Byron did get by McDowell to get the second place. And Tyler Reddick got by Ty Gibbs on the restart, but did not get by McDowell. Reddick remains in fourth. Side by side through the S's is Chastain and Bush battling for sixth. Bumper to bumper near contact between Larson and Almondinger for seventh. 
Chastain overcooked the tires a little bit, getting into turn seven. Bush going to get to his outside through the grass in turn eight. Big slide by Chastain again. Stays in front of Bush for the moment. Reddick finally gets by Michael McDowell for third place. Byron still trying to close the gap on Bell as they work through turn 11. Bush now to the outside of the one car of Ross Chastain trying to make the pass there. Ty Gibbs now working on Michael McDowell. Clean air for Christopher Bell, but again, almost 15 lap older tires than the rest of the field. And we expect that he is going to hit pit row within the next several laps also. They want to come in on 21 to play it a little conservative, make sure they don't run out. Jamie? And an update on Christopher Bell, our leader. I just asked Adam Stevens about the fuel switch, and all teams do something different, but Adam said we do have a fuel pressure switch. We had to hit it already because we had that pickup problem earlier. Now, as far as the tires go, you guys were spot on. His tire wear was good. Christopher was a little nervous about the idea of staying out, but he said, I don't want to get spun, but I think we're good enough to stay ahead of him. Well, it's an interesting, an interesting scenario for for the twenty and the thirty four. And, and as a driver, it's a scenario I've never liked when I'm in Michael McDowell's position right here, and you're just looking backwards, uh, getting run over, and and off sequence with all the guys that are on fresh tires. Look back. All right, let's follow up on what Regan was saying. He's talking about Travis Peterson, the 34 car, and Michael McDowell. They want to come at lap 21. That means there'll be 47 laps to go in the race. That that says they're going to have to run 23 laps one run and 24 laps another to make it to lap 68. But remember, we do know we're going to have two or three caution laps at the end of stage two, which will buy them some. As you can see here coming through the S's, the problem with with McDowell versus Bell. Bell kept a track position. Bell's still leading. You see right there, clear back here, already in ninth place, losing a lot of track position early. That's what you can't afford to do if you're gambling like this. Well, and Michael McDowell's car was probably a, a 10th to 15th place car before he hit it. And so it just makes it tough. And when you're the leader, you obviously have the, the cleanest air and able to, to get the best amount of lap time and most performance out of your car aerodynamically to make it turn as good as possible. But uh, we see William Byron right on the back bumper of Christopher Bell. I'm impressed with Bell's race car, though. But to be able to hold these guys off for even one corner, you know, regardless of, of a lap or so, that's, that's impressive. This car's fast, and it tells you that there isn't a whole lot of fall off whatsoever in these tires. Byron and Bell top the list for Xfinity fastest lap. Well, this will be, as you see, William Byron go to the inside of Christopher Bell. And I was getting ready to say this will be the toughest section for um, Christopher Bell to, to kind of manage those back tires and the wheel spin compared to those new tires of William Byron and the guys behind him. So everyone has made one pit stop except Christopher Bell in the 20 and Michael McDowell's 34. That's one thing I love about, uh oh, Bubba spun. More problems for Bubba. Man, every time we come here, Bubba, and all of his trouble happened early, too. I remember, well, we saw Kyle Larson. Yep. Even last year, he got underneath Kyle Larson. We got, you know, spun underneath of him. Ruined his day last year. Same thing. First lap today, right back in the hole. Apparently there was contact between Brad Keselowski and uh, Bubba Wallace. Here's a look. Oh, you see Brad locking it up. Knew he was in trouble. Got in the left rear of Bubba. Round it went. Yeah, and that, I, you, you saw Bubba have to check up a little bit. And in that stadium section where they were, you can take a really wide arc, but it opens you up to get T-boned like that from where uh, Brad's angle was coming from. Kozlowski continues in 34th. Wallace in 39th. Everybody's still on the lead lap as we're into stage two. William Byron out in front of Tyler Reddick and Christopher Bell. All 
All right, so Byron back into the race lead. Christopher Bell currently second. Tyler Reddick is third. Ty Gibbs fourth. Ross Chastain fifth. Kyle Larson in sixth. Chase Elliott seventh. Kyle Busch eighth. Ninth place for A.J. Allmendinger. Alex Bowman rounds out the top ten. Denny Hamlin in eleventh. Michael McDowell twelfth. Shane Van Gisbergen in thirteenth. Fourteenth for Justin Haley. Joey Logano fifteenth. Sixteenth is Carson Hosevar. 17th, Ryan Blaney, Chris Buescher, 18th, Ryan Priest, 19th, and Zane Smith is 20th. Chase Briscoe in 21st, Noah Gregson, 22nd, Todd Gillen, 23rd, Josh Berry, 24th, 25th for Corey LaJoy, 26th place is uh, now Corey LaJoy, Daniel Suarez is 25th, 27th is Martin Trex Jr., Kamui Kobayashi, 28th, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 29th, and Eric Jones, 30th. Harrison Burton, 31st. John Hunter Nemechek, 32nd. Austin Sindrick, 33rd. Brad Keselowski, 34th. Kaz Grala, 35th. Daniel Hemrick, 36th. Justin, ha uh, Justin, well, what, I don't know why I said Justin there. Daniel Hemrick, 36th. Austin Dillon, 37th. Uh, Timmy Hill, 38th. And Bubba Wallace, 39th. I have no clue why I even said Justin. Where did I see Justin? Maybe it was Austin Sindrick, 30th. I, I don't know. We're, we're going to forget I said that. Uh, <laughs> Had a brain lapse there for a second. Lap 21 of 68 so far. Early going of stage two. Again, Bell won stage one. William Byron, uh, by way of race pace, has been the best on the short run. The Toyotas of Reddick Gibbs better on the longer run back at stage one. Uh, Bell is in fifth place right now, losing track position on those older tires. Held on for about a lap and a half, and that was it. Uh, and then once he lost the lead, he got put back in dirty air. He's been losing more positions since. But Tyler Reddick, 1.4 seconds behind the race leader in second. Uh, Gibbs was the driver who got by Reddick in the early going to stage one. Reddick on this restart got by Gibbs, and Gibbs has not yet gotten past him to this point. Byron's led the most laps with 15 laps led, and the only two lead changes were Bell staying out to win the last stage, and then Byron just getting by Bell on this restart. So, uh, two chain, lead changes in 21 laps. Those are the only two drivers to lead at least one lap in this race. 84 likes on the stream. Again, the goal is 150, so be sure to hit that like button if you guys have not done so yet. 34 is about to cause some problems. Yeah, he's very slow. Uh, definitely doesn't have the pace uh, anywhere near that of what even Christopher Bell has. McDowell's falling to 13th already. Uh, still, McDowell and Bell are the only two drivers who have not hit pit road yet today. Kickoff weekend continues Sunday. On ESPN, the United Football League, 21 complete here at Circuit of the Americas. William Byron leading Tyler Reddick, Ty Gibbs, Ross Chastain, and Christopher Bell, but Kyle Larson has spun. Well, it was off the front bumper of Christopher Bell, but it looks to me like Kyle missed a little bit. Slipped up, locked the brakes up, whatever, got a little bit high, tried to hold it down. Bell was there, got into the back of his funny mount. He was definitely up out of the groove, wasn't down on the bottom. Michael McDowell on hip road, making his first stop of the day. Regan? Michael McDowell, Steve deciding last second to run one extra lap on that session there, going to lap 22. Needs more turn in the low speed corners, and the steering wheel has some slop to it. That is really a pain when you're a driver. Christopher Bell is the only car on track who has not made a pit stop today. He's in fifth, six seconds back. Well, he's probably going to have to come this time by uh, to pit. Going to be the next, next couple laps. Larry. Yeah, I think he'll come this time. This gives them the insurance, guys, because if he comes at lap 23, that means he has to make one more run of 23 laps, then he could go 22 to the end. So this kind of gives them insurance. They know they can go at least 23 laps. And I'm hearing right now, just checked with the team, Larry. It's going to be lap 24. Pit crew slowly putting on their helmets and getting ready, waiting for the 20 to come down. Then he don't have to go 22 laps to run. 24, 22, 22. Third place, Ross Chastain. Ty Gibbs battling it out here. And Gibbs takes the spot for now. Yeah, and this is that, that differing lines right there. Ross really wide through the stadium, and, and Ty Gibbs really tight uh, on, the, on the bottom of the corner right there. 
through 15. Now they're going through 16, 17, and 18. We call it the carousel. Into 19, run over the whole curb. More curb you hit, the better the car turns. Less of that outside asphalt you have to use. Split the whole curb right here to get as wide as possible to turn in. Use that paint on exit. It's grippy. As you go up this hill right here, you see those dark marks uh, on the racetrack, and those are all bumps. There's a tunnel that goes under the racetrack right there, and you see the swells in the racetrack, and the cars bounce, and you go over those first couple bumps, you see all the skid marks from the restarts, but... I'm selling that first one to jump right back over here. That yeah. thing is a big time. Yeah, and the farther you go to the left on, on the screen, uh, the bumpier it is. So it's a, it's a crazy corner because you can break into that hill, but you can only break so hard. You have to modulate the brake pressure over those bumps up the hill. And I think that's what makes that dive bomb so dangerous there. As they fan out on those restarts in particular, the farther to the inside they go, the bumpier it is, like you're saying. And I think the proof is there. You can see it in the tire marks where everybody's locked it up over time. And right here, you saw A.J. Allmendinger go through turn eight. He hit that access road, got the car jacked up, and, and it hurt him all the way down to turn 11. AJ, so much fun to watch on these road courses. Always right there. Always getting the most out of these race cars. Attacks these race tracks. It's so fun to watch. Almendinger in seventh. Running 7.6 seconds off the lead. Held by William Byron. With 23 laps complete. We'll take you, Fox. A little dirty side-by-side -side here. All right, side-by-side -side commercial break on Fox. Your top 10, William Byron leading, Tyler Reddick second, Ty Gibbs third, Ross Chastain fourth, Christopher Bell fifth. Uh, Bell still the only driver yet to hit pit road. Uh, looks like actually he is just coming in right now. So Bell is now going into the pits from fifth place. So that gives Kyle Busch fifth, A.J. Allmendinger sixth, Alex Bowman seventh, Chase Elliott eighth, Shane Van Gisbergen ninth, Denny Hamlin is in tenth. That is your top 10 as of this point in the race. Still early for the most part, although with no cautions for incident, the race pace has been pretty quick, 82.21 miles per hour, pretty high for this very long road course. Uh, about an hour of action already into this cup race, but uh, it's definitely flying by. We're over a third of the way home. Up to 84 likes on the stream. Sure to hit that like button. 2.2 second difference between Byron and Reddick at the front of the field right now. Lap time wise, uh, Byron was about a tenth quicker than Reddick the last lap. Uh, looking at some other lap times from drivers inside the top ten. Um, Alex Bowman's running some pretty decent lap times in seventh. Uh, started in the 16th place position, if I remember correctly, is where he qualified. So he's moved up nine positions from the start of the race. Uh, his last lap was actually seven tenths quicker than Ullmendinger who was the next driver for position in front of him. And it was also about five tenths, so about a half a second quicker than Kyle Busch, a couple tenths quicker than Chastain, but not as quick as Gibbs, Reddick, and Byron. So Bowman in seventh looks to be the fourth fastest car on the racetrack right now. Look for him to move forward. And Carson Hosevar, who's up to 12th after qualifying right around 20th today, uh, his lap time's looking pretty good as well as he's got the fifth fastest laps uh, or ran the fifth fastest lap on the racetrack that last time, only behind Bowman and then the top three of Byron, Reddick, and Gibbs. So uh, Carson Hosevar making a charge, and maybe he can have a run at a top 10. Again, he is currently in 12th place. Austin Sindrick, who restarted at the tail end of the field after his lengthy pit stop, has made his way up to 24th uh, from the rear of the field on the restart. So he's almost cut it in half. And Christopher Bell, after he had exited pit road, looks to have come out... Uh, we'll have to wait on that one more lap. It says 19th right now, but I think that's because he was on pit road when the race leaders got to the start-finish line the last time by. So we'll give it another lap to update exactly where Christopher Bell uh, is running on the racetrack. Uh, it looks like he's 34th on Fox's leaderboard. So 34th is where Bell runs right now. One spot behind McDowell, who pitted several laps before and was able to cycle back out in front of him on his fresher tires. Austin, Texas, William Byron leading... Tyler Reddick by two seconds. It in base. And Ty Gibbs by four. Ross Chastain, four and a half. A.J. Allmendinger, eight seconds back now, up into the top five. Noah Gregson has pitted. So has Corey LaJoy. That puts them on a two-stop strategy. 
Uh, the 99 pitted of Daniel Suarez and, or excuse me, did not pit. He'll get a pass-through penalty uh, for violating track limits as Van Gisbergen pits. Yeah, we saw Van Gisbergen racing around Chase Elliott in some of the same cars and, and probably figured if we can beat him to pit road and run a lap or two extra, we might be able to gain some track position if we can run some faster laps. Close call right there with Austin Cedric. Let me go back to Suarez. He was too fast entering the pit. Speeding on pit road is the penalty. So he'll have to do a drive through at pit road speed. And serves that penalty now. I am so impressed with William Byron laying the lap times down on this racetrack. Has dominated this race so far. This boy just continues to impress in that 24. And he puts the work in. I was at the go-kart track on Wednesday, and when I got there, William Byron was just finishing up in his go-kart. Oh, Kobayashi and Stenhouse. Oh, we got quite the kerfuffle right there. Quite what? the what? <laughs> <laughs> kerfuffle. That's a Ken Squire term. That must go back, I don't know, 30, 40 years. Well, that's my word of the week, so. Well, all right. There you go. Well, here's another one. Van Gisbergen speeding on pit road. Oh, no. Minimizing mistakes. He told us that at the beginning of the show. Bowman working his way toward the front here. Uh, restarted 12th, now up to 6th place. Bowman's coming. He's fast. Very good here. Solid average uh, finishes here. Been in the top ten all three races. And... Oh, that's a got a tap. Well, he's not done with him yet. Well, I've heard of the three tap rule, but that was got him of, back. That was kind of a bump and dump right there. Jeff Gordon did that exact same thing to me at Martinsville one time. I moved him up out of the way and spun him out, and he floored it. I heard him gas it up. He hit me, spun me in the wrong direction. Well, this is Tornade, all that dirt. Yeah, it looked like Stenhouse was trying to knock him out of the groove and, and put him in the dirt right there and wound up getting him into the left rear tire, the zone car. So Kobayashi, who's won the Rolex 24 hours and 24 hour of Le Mans and raced in Formula One, comes to pit road. William Byron. Not only is he the pole winningest active driver in the Cup Series, uh, the all-time pole winner on road courses, this pole winner on road courses, Daryl Walter would die. Uh, five for Byron now. As a driver coach, Max Pappas. And uh, Pappas had a great career in IndyCar, in endurance racing, sports car racing. Now makes the steering wheels for a lot of these drivers, but he is Byron's driver coach. So I would imagine be really good on road courses. Yeah, and that's who William was, was uh, at the car track with, and Max and, and William have had a great relationship through the years, and, I, you know, there's several of these these young young men that, that just have great work ethic. Um, William has a great great family and support system to, to go along with Max, uh, with, his, with his parents, and just a great story coming from iRacing to do all the things that he's been so successful with in, in the Cup Series. Kyle Busch got up to uh, Bowman's bumper there, a corner or two back. That's a pretty busy battle right there from uh, sixth place on back. Bowman, Bush, Elliott, Hamlin. Well, we talked earlier, Alex Bowman, Kyle Busch, all, the, all those guys needed to have a good run today. Tyler Reddick hitting from second place. Josh. Strong start to the race for Tyler Reddick. He continues to need a little help in the carousel and the stadium section. They've been air pressure jumps the last time. And fuel this time. Jay Almendinger having a very good run today so far. Needed more rear grip without hurting the front turn earlier. The last adjustment was not good, though. He said it, it was worse this run than the previous run. Look at the big list of drivers who just pitted, including most all of that sixth place battle. Uh, back to Haley, who was the highest running Ford in the race in 10th.
see Tyler Reddick come out of the pits, and as you watch all these cars, there's a huge bump that we talked about it right there. See all the front ends just jump up in the air. Chase Elliott decided he was going to need to go underneath Carson Hosebar as quick as he could to, to get the track position and lose as little time. Forces him wide. Well, that was experience on Chase Elliott's behalf. Hosebar was, wasn't really paying attention. How about Bell? I'll get you both right here. Thank you very much. Good move. Of course, Christopher Bell was not coming out of the pits. His tires are up to temperature. He's up to rhythm. And uh, moves on past that group. As those guys were getting it sorted out, he pounced on them. Byron now four seconds up on Ty Gibbs. Make it five. Gibbs and Chastain. And then a big gap back to Denny Hamlin. As we run here, Mike, this, this race just keeps keeps gaining more interest to me as we have differing pit strategies that are going to start to merge as we get to the end of the second stage and into the middle of the of the last section of this race well i think where that's where it's really going to merge in that last section of the race like you spoke of uh, one caution untimely but one caution that comes out and it's gonna again it's going to separate this thing and, and hand it to to some people and not so good for the others Here's William Byron to pit road. Regan. While Ross Chastain, you see him peel off in the back there, pitting from third place. Right now, he's still too loose. Early in the race, too loose, especially through the right-handers. That is continuing. It was only minorly better. He needs a bigger adjustment. Jamie? Ty Gibbs got his first career road course win in the Xfinity Series, hoping to do it in the Cup Series here today. It's a little bit of an adjustment, a little too loose to the right-handers, but the car is that fast. You see he has clear vision. They got that tear off and four tires for the 54. That'll move Denny Hamlin to the front. Denny Hamlin staying out on the racetrack. They originally planned to pit, but when they noticed everybody else feeling off in front of them, they felt like they wanted to take the points, especially if they could get that playoff point at the end of the stage. Well, that's the call you got to make at the end of these stages, and, and those points, as we've talked many, many times, can be very, very val valuable as you go through the, the playoffs into the end of the regular season. Sometimes it might come down to one point, and you have to take, a, take those points when you can get them. And no risk for Hamlin. He has a win. So... And I want to add, go for it, I want to yeah. add one more layer to that. I don't think he. I think they already know what bed they're lying in. In other words, I don't think they think that they could go up and pass that leader and contend for a win without some help here. That that help can come in the form of strategy later on in the race. Give Luck a chance to operate. In the meantime, let's go get some stage points. Take care of business in the playoffs. Well, he's going to have to go because the car behind him, Ryan Blaney, is a fair amount faster than he is. Ryan Blaney, last year's Cup Series champion, and he's he's really been the one flying the banner for for Ford this year. Uh, we see it again today with the with the speed in their cars is not there compared to the the Chevys and the and the Toyotas. So they definitely have some work to do. But Ryan Blaney has made the most out of it. Larry. Yeah, I've been watching Christopher Bell in this 20th. You notice he's sitting back at 20th right now, and I think we know what his strategy is, a two-stop strategy. But he's well behind a lot of cars that just made their trip to pit road. Their pit stop was 19.65. They kept that car jacked up on the left side for about four or five additional seconds, making sure they got that thing completely full of fuel. Bell in 20th. 30 seconds behind race leader Denny Hamlin, but of course on very, very different strategies. Here's uh, Chase Briscoe, the Mahindra Tractors Cam. Might need one of those to do some repair out in turn eight before this race is done, as he's uh, right up there against Joey Logano. You see them out in the paint. One more lap here. As they, as they run through the day, those exit paint sections will get grippier and grippier. Now they're going to go up into turn one. You're going to see Joey going to go to the left of the bumps. Chase Briscoe goes straight through them. That's a that's a good strategy for, for Logano if your car is bouncing all over the place, bottoming out, locking up tires. Just go around those bumps into turn one. That's what I had to do last year in, in my car, many laps. Uh, and, and you see Joey Logano 
choosing that strategy to, to just go around those bumps. Final lap stage two, Hamlin, Blaney, and Martin Truex, who earlier had to stop because of contact with two other cars and a shattered wheel rim. A Truex back up in it. Here for third, along with Todd Gilliland and Ryan Priest, as we come toward the end of stage two. Limping around the track is Michael McDowell. Something broken in the steering on uh, his car. A lot of, lot of uh, opportunities to, to damage that steering with all the curb jumping and everything that happens to the vehicle. Very tough on it at this particular racetrack. Um, well, we already heard one car change the, the rack and pinion and go to the rear. Maybe look at him. I mean, he's got he's a, out of power good. steering. I'd yep. say lost fluid or something. No, no power steering at all. See the hitch there? It's like the steering is in and out. Like the power steering is coming in and out on him. Look right. at the difference that it makes. He can barely steer. Barely turn the wheel. Around turn 20, back to the start and finish line. Denny Hamlin, your stage two winner. Half a second up on Ryan Blaney and 1.7 ahead of Mark Truex. First stage win of the year for Hamlin and his second at Circuit of the Americas. All right, so Denny Hamlin is your stage two winner. Mar uh, Ryan Blaney ended up second. Martin Truex Jr. third. Todd Gillen fourth. Ryan Priest fifth. Brad Keselowski, sixth place. John Hunter Nemechek, seventh. William Byron, eighth. First of the cars that did pit. Daniel Hemrick, ninth. Josh Berry rounded out the top ten. So those will be your stage point getters for stage two. Approaching the halfway point in this race, still 38 laps to go. Uh, four laps shy of halfway. William Byron has led 22 of the 30 laps. Bell led seven. And Denny Hamlin led these last two of the stage, staying out to get the uh, stage win and again christopher bell won stage one as well so we'll see if hamlin blaney truex and them guys actually end up hitting pit road we saw bell stay out at the end of the last stage maybe those guys try to stay out to get as close to the edge of the fuel window as possible uh the more i think about it though the more i don't think that they're going to be able to make it i mean we haven't had a caution for incident at all yet today and i feel like they're going to have to get a couple cautions to make it on one more stop uh talking about the guys who did not pit at the end of this stage so uh, I would probably lean towards them having to make another pit stop. I mean, they're going to need probably either one really lengthy caution or two yellows at the very least, two yellows and no overtime to uh, be able to make it to the end. You know, we can get a caution and end up having an overtime finish, and that only hurts them even worse. Jamie Gemming, thanks for tuning in. What happened to SVG? No live coverage in New Zealand. Uh, he had a speeding penalty on pit road. I did take him out of my fantasy lineup. He was uh, one of my garage, or he was my garage driver coming into the day. I wanted to make sure he was still going to stay in the garage uh, having that speeding penalty. It's going to be tough to come back from. I think he was running right around 10th place at the time of that happening. And it looks like he ended up finishing the stage in 31st. So tough break there for Van Gisbergen. And pit road speeding penalty, and that was in stage two during the set of green flag pit stops prior to the end of the stage. Lost about 20 positions in the running order, having to come back down and make the pass through penalty. 87 likes on the stream again. Our goal is 150, so be sure to hit that like button if you guys haven't done so yet. 158 votes were casted. We are at the end of stage two, so I will end this poll now. Uh, and it looks like other. Clearly going to win the poll. 54% of you say somebody other than Byron, Gibbs, and Reddick uh, will win in this race today. So you still think that, even though that those have been the top three cars, not only all weekend, but all day today as well. I don't know. I don't see that changing, especially if we don't get that many cautions to shake up the uh, shake up the running order. I think the biggest thing that could take them out of it is if we get a caution in the middle of green flag pit stops and they haven't pit yet and they have to end up pitting behind other cars because we're only one more pit stop out from the finish, at least for those that have already pitted. Left denied. No, no. You left the facility. Actually, I had to wait on you to do an interview so I could do mine. It was the first time this year that I've had to wait on you. I know you wait on me a lot. 
Here's the stage finish. Hamlin, Blaney, Truex, Gilliland, Priest with stage points in fifth. Kozlowski, Nemechek overcoming a penalty. Byron, the only driver who stopped at lap 28 to earn any stage points in stage two. Hemrick and Josh Berry, the top ten. Fox Saturday Baseball returns with a star-studded showdown. Aaron Judge and Juan Soto lead the Yankees against Jose Altuve and the Astros. Or you'll see the Giants take on the Padres. It all starts Saturday, 7 Eastern. Check for the game in your area. 39 drivers started here. They are still all on the lead lap. Michael McDowell with steering issues brings his car to pit road. Yeah, this might be the last time we see this camera today or it'll stay on until Michael gets wore out. Unless they find something wrong. You well, shut Kevin, the car off. It's the first time I've ever experienced this. We get a bird's eye view. He is literally right below us. And it's coming up on this car. Oh, you've witnessed it. I've seen a picture of you after a race at the Roble sitting beside your car that wore you out like this. You know the last car I passed that day for a 10th place finish? I set you up good on that one. You. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying that you beat me with no power steering? <laughs> well, you beat me with being able to see. Beat before, you blind. So yeah, I guess we're even. I don't, Larry. What can you do here? Obviously, a leak, a uh, uh, loose fitting. I mean, that's the first thing they got to do, Clint, is determine exactly what it is. Has it run out of fluid? Does it have a leak? Is it, does it have a line issue? You know, obviously, we've had just just the rack and pinion itself, the rack itself going bad. You can see just how busy these cars are under the hood from that shot that we just had and how, how hard it is to visibly see any kind of problem. They've pulled the air cleaner off of that car so they can get down to the rack and, and actually see what the problem at hand is. There it comes off. Now the more of the air box coming off. And, and since there are no track limits here except in the S's with all of the alligator teeth uh, on the curbings and all of the bouncing around, the steering probably takes a bigger beating oh. here than anywhere we I, go. I would agree with you on that, Mike. And, and, you know, we talk about the bumps up into turn one and, and all the jumping around that it does right there. But when you go through um, turn seven, turn ten, and, and you just you literally just square the car up and jump it straight over the curb all four tires almost probably off the ground and when it lands it compresses and it slams into the rub block so then you I, get around to that rut in eight big yeah. rut four or five inches deep yeah you can see he is wore out already yeah. get some more water you're gonna need it you need more than water that's a terrible feeling i've been there michael terrible feeling 31 laps complete, Denny Hamlin leading for Toyota, and under caution, the Toyota Camry XSE leads the field here at Circuit of the Americas. Here's your progressive race summary. After two of three stages, Denny Hamlin, your leader, William Byron and Christopher Bell have also, uh, Denny Hamlin, have led today three lead changes and all 39 cars still on the lead lap well we talked about it so much that several guys uh, at the back part of this field that have had contact with the other cars they've had speeding penalties they've they've had all kinds of things happen we've seen several get a couple get penalties through the S's and here we are again getting ready to come down pit road and no mistakes don't speed Take care of your pit equipment. Get the car in the box. Don't hit anybody on the way out. There's so many opportunities to have something go wrong with your race right here while you enter pit road. Now the final stage, twice as long as the first two stages, so this will not be the final pit stop of the day. But here they come, led by Hamlin. Regan. Eddie Hamlin told that he will have to go around the 34, as you see it right there, to get into his pit box. He's loose entering turns 2 and 16. Those are the areas he needs the most help with. Very, very disciple and what he, or very, very descriptive on what he needed through those sections. The 12th car, Ryan Blaney, no rear stability in the braking zone. Josh? Tough start, tough, tough start to the race for Martin Truex Jr. after shattering that wheel rim. Right now, he's playing that that car is just way too loose, making an adjustment to help him out with a 38 up top. Hill. He said he's struggling through the edges, otherwise, he's happy with that car right now. Well, 
Boy, when Truex whipped out of his pit stall, he almost got into Brad Kozlowski, who was coming in as Truex was exiting. Denny Hamlin, stage two winner. So William Byron will cycle back into the race lead after the drivers who stayed out to get stage points at the end of stage two have now pitted during the stage break. Uh, Ty Gibbs going to line up in second on the restart. Ross Chastain third. Tyler Reddick is in fourth place. Alex Bowman fifth. Uh, and then we will wait for the rest of the leaderboard to update. But that is your top five for this upcoming restart. We'll take a quick ad break and continue our live commentary coverage of the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. Did I miss the diecast? No, you did not. You're actually just in time for it. I went and grabbed it uh, while I had the broadcast playing there for a little bit. Well, this guy was a pretty good road course racer in his NASCAR Cup Series days, mainly earlier in his career, but his last career win also came on a road course in Sonoma, and it was in 2014. It's a Tony Stewart diecast. 2015, sorry. Um, 20. I got my years wrong again. 2016 at Sonoma was his final career win. But he is a good road course racer in his career, one of the more winningest cup drivers on road course, and that would be Tony Stewart. Uh, this is actually a 1999 rookie Tony Stewart die cast. Uh, so showing this one off, Pontiac. I believe it is the only Pontiac die cast I actually own. Um, but yeah, Home Depot. Actually, oddly enough, for those of you that don't know, I actually work at a Home, De uh, Home Depot warehouse distribution center for my full-time job uh, right now, obviously, while doing this on the weekend. So uh, that is... Uh, Part of the reason why I ended up buying it, but I also, at the time, didn't have a Tony Stewart die cast either. So, uh, something about getting, like, rookie die casts of drivers I like uh, for whatever particular reason. And you can see the rookie stripes on the back of the car. So, again, this 1999 uh, Winston Cup era, Tony Stewart, again, Home Depot Pontiac. I thought the Home Depot schemes were pretty good. Uh, I think my favorite Home Depot scheme, it's like a inverted... It's inverted colors of this. It's like white where everywhere has orange on this car. The orange would be white, and then the white stripes would be orange. Uh, I, I think that inverted Home Depot scheme he ran about the same time period uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s. That was probably my favorite Home Depot paint scheme. But, um, yeah, rookie Tony Stewart car. That's the diecast showing for this weekend, stage two diecast showing. I've only done that twice this year. I'm going to make sure I do that every stream uh uh, going forward again like I did last season. So uh, all 124 scales, and hopefully I can add to that at some point this season as well. We're probably not going to get through every single one of them throughout the course of the year, although we might, though, considering we have uh, four, live com excuse me, four live commentary streams on a semi-weekly basis now. Ready for stage three, and they'll run to lap 68. See the checkered flag. One more pit stop in the offing. Well, it's been pretty smooth sailing so far, but it isn't going to be long. Here we go. Well, your Byron chose the inside, so did time. All right, green flag back in the air. Stage three underway. Byron on the inside of row one of the restart. Chastain on the outside, and you got the Toyotas of Gibbs and Reddick in row two as they head up the hill to turn one. Gibbs locking the brakes up a little bit. Byron did. Also, Byron is going to go wide. He locked the brakes a little more, and Gibbs is side-by-side -side for the race lead now with Ross Chastain. As they get out of turn two, Chastain will end up with the race lead. Gibbs in second, battle for third, and the S's between Byron and Reddick. Byron squeezes in and holds his track position, but now has to get back to the race lead where he has been for most of the day, and we'll see if he can do it. His teammate Alex Bowman's made his way to fifth, and Chris Buescher now enters the top 10. Shout out also Justin Haley running top 10 today. Uh, got up to 10th right before the end of the uh, last stage before the green flag pit stop. Cycled out of the pits and on this restart he's up to 8th. Good run for the Rick Ware Racing Ford. Rick Ware Racing uh, maybe carrying the banner for Ford today between him and Chris Buescher. Ty Gibbs trying to put some pressure on Ross Chastain, and Reddick almost got back alongside William Byron through turn 11. Three wide further back in the pack as they go down the long straightaway. Big uh, spin there in the middle of turn... I should say it would be more towards the exit of turn 11. And it was Ryan Price. He spun there in practice as well. 
but I'm sure he had contact this time around, which sent him sideways. Chastain's going to hold everybody up here, I think. Uh, not everybody, but the fast cars that are behind him by way of lap time. The next four in line, Gibbs, Byron, Reddick, Bowman, they were all faster than Chastain on speed during stage two. So Ross is going to have his work cut out for him as we'll be only halfway through this race when we get to the start-finish line this time by. Our only two cautions were the two stage ends at lap 15 and lap 30. We have not had a caution for incident to this point, so we are not guaranteed another yellow. Shane Van Gisbergen, who had a pit road speeding penalty during stage two, has already made his way up to 17th place. Great job. I mean, he was back in, uh, I think, 30th right after his penalty, so a lot of positions gained on this restart for SVG. Had that stack up in turn 11 with the spin of Priest. I think he passed a handful of cars there as well. Gibbs to the back bumper of Chastain. Gives him a bump. Can't get him up out of the way. In fact, it might have actually launched Chastain a little further off of turn one, and now it's about a two to three car length gap into the Estes again. Gibbs, Byron, trying to hunt down Chastain. The first to get by him and get that clean air advantage is going to have a very, very good chance of trying to hold everybody else off, at least to the next set of green flag pit stops. Everybody has to pit one more time for fuel purposes before the end of the race. That window will open up between 20 and 24 laps to go. Again, currently right now we're at 34 laps left in this race. Some drivers may try to split it in half by way of tire wear, but the longer you stay out with cars that have already pitted because you're not going to go a lap down on this 3.4 mile road course, the risk you have of a caution coming out in the middle of green flag pit stops and you end up having to cycle at the tail end of the field. We've seen that in the past road course racing. And uh, we could end up seeing that here today. Especially on a longer road course like this. Again, there's no lap traffic to be had. Single file through the bout. The at least top 10 positions in the running order. But still pretty tightly compacted together. Now there's a couple of cars side by side. Looks like Chase Elliott, Chris Buescher battling for 7th. As they head for turn 14, Elliott will have the inside. Outside for Busher. Off the X of the corner, Chase Elliott will win that battle for position. Again, that was a battle for seven, so Chase up another spot. Getting by Busher. Busher, the highest running forward in eighth place. Next one is uh, Justin Haley right behind him in ninth. Christopher Bell in tenth. Qualified fourth. One stage, one stayed out at the end of the stage. And was on pit road for a lengthy amount of time during his green flag stop, so that's why he's not up here in the top four or five like he was earlier. Michael McDowell is battling the power steering issue still on the track. He'll let the re leaders race by. Tough break there for McDowell. And Gibbs going for the lead in turn one. Near contact made, still side by side into turn two. Gibbs on the outside, and he can't make the pass. Byron almost slipped to the inside of Gibbs after Gibbs had to get out of the gas to let Chastain in front of him into the S's. But that's where it gets hard coming through the S's. If you're side by side into three, it just throws your angle off for four, five, and six. And well, Ty Gibbs certainly dove to the inside of one in the dirt. Over the dirt, slipped and sliding around. Now it hands the opportunity to William Byron to pounce here, getting into 11. 35 down, 33 laps to go. Ross Chastain holding on to a narrow lead against Ty Gibbs and William Byron. We are going to go through the uh, full field running order right now in the early going of stage three, lap 35 of 68. Again, Ross Chastain, your race leader by 10th of a second over Ty Gibbs in second. William Byron is third. Tyler Reddick, fourth. Alex Bowman, fifth. Kyle Busch, sixth. Chase Elliott, seventh. Chris Buescher, eighth. Justin Haley, ninth. Christopher Bell rounds out the top 10. And 11th is A.J. Allmendinger. Joey Logano, 12th. Chase Briscoe, 13th. Austin Dillon, 14th. Carson Hosevar, 15th. Shane Van Gisbergen, 16th, 17th is Bubba Wallace, St. Smith, 18th, Austin Sindrick, 19th, Kyle Larson is 20th. He had a spin in the middle of uh, stage two, so that's what put Larson outside the top 10. Martin Trucks Jr., damage early, sent him to the back. He's 21st, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 22nd, Todd Gillen, 23rd, Ryan Blaney, 24th, Harrison Burton, 25th, Brad Kissel, uh, sorry, rather, Daniel Suarez, 26th, 
Brad Keselowski, 27th. Denny Hamlin, 28th. Uh, stayed out to get the stage win at stage two was Hamlin. Corey LaJoy, 29th. Kaz Grella, 30th. Eric Jones, 31st. John Hunter Nemechek, 32nd. Uh, he also had a penalty. His was uh, in the S's. Uh, by my accounts, I think he's the only driver, at least that has been notified over the Fox broadcast, that has had a penalty for cutting the S's. Uh, Ryan Priest is 33rd. Timmy Hill, 34th. Kamui Kobayashi, 35th. He had a spin with Stenhouse. Uh, Noah Gregson is 36. Josh Berry is a lap down. Not sure how that happened, but he is a lap down, 37th. Daniel Heimrich, 38, two laps down. And Michael McDowell with the power steering issue still on track, but is three laps down. So 36 cars of the 39 that started the race on the lead lap. Four different drivers have led at least one lap. Your current race leader, Ross Chastain, has led three. William Byron's led the most. He has led 24. Seven laps led for Bell, who won stage one and the early going of stage two. And Denny Hamlin, uh, who stayed out to get the stage win in stage two, has led three laps. So, again, those are the four different drivers to lead at least one lap in the race. And we've had five lead changes amongst those four drivers. Byron's led three different times today for those 24 laps led. And, uh, again, he is in third after losing his opportunity to stay in front on this restart. He was a control car. On the restart, Chastain on the outside of row one was able to get to the lead after Byron locked the tires up and slid wide in the corner. Going to take a quick break here, continue our live commentary coverage on the other side. Again, you're listening to the NASCAR Cup Series Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda on KRC. Fubar, thanks for tuning in. Clean race, and uh, we've got some good racing on this restart going on right now. Got a one-second difference between Chastain and Gibbs. Gibbs had that slip-up in turn eight the last lap before the commercial break. Still got time to get him, and obviously pit stops could cycle things out a little bit more as well. Shane Van Gisbergen's gained two positions uh, since the lap and a half or so after the restart. And we just had a change for position under the commercial break as well. William Byron to second as he got by Ty Gibbs. In turn one, in fact. For Ross Chastain's the leader, and William Byron has used the run-up to turn one to make the pass on Ty Gibbs for second. Gibbs now in the clutches of Alex Bowman to hold on to the third spot. So let's have a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Clint, who you got an eye on? I've got this guy, number 48, Alex Bowman. Started 17th, up to fourth, marches on, and definitely in the right direction. I'm keeping my eye on Christopher Bell because he has a little bit different pitch strategy, had some trouble on pitch road but has a really fast car working his way back forward well there's still one pit stop to go but who's the hardest guy on the track to pass ross chastain everybody knows it including ross is ross the boss we'll see how this plays out those are your credit one bank ones to watch with 31 laps to go at circuit of the americas chastain holding a one and a half second lead earlier this morning we listened in on the track house team meeting for car number one all right, fellas, uh, today we got stages at 15, 30, 68. Uh, we got five sets of tires to play with. I don't expect us to use them all. We got that set of scuffs. We'll have them prepped and ready. You know, like I always say, we don't need doctors and lawyers. We also need <laughs> savages, boys. <laughs> Bill Surgeon and crew. All right, Chastain up by... Between one and one and a half seconds, it varies depending on whether the car ahead or behind is on the straightaway or going through one of the corners. But uh, right now, that passes for what would be a commanding lead. He's still laying some good lap times out, even with Byron getting into second place. He still put two tenths on him. Well, I think that track position for Ross Chastain has really um, allowed woke that us car up. Right? Well, it's woken up and it's allowed us to see the speed that it has in it. And I think they're going to recognize that for sure. Uh, and want to keep that track position because they know they have a car to keep up. Front four, pretty close in contact. Uh, another second back to Kyle Busch in fifth spot. Uh, we listened to some strategy there. You know, about a 24-hour run to the end of the 
race, which would be longer than we've probably done run all weekend. So, and I think it's like having a fresh stuff is good, but you're going to lose time to wreck it. Yeah, you just, you're going to lose time and you're going to run the risk of catching an untimely caution. Well, so far today, we have not had a caution for cause, oh, man. only the two stage breaks. That's going to be big trouble for Chase Elliott. It looked like he went all the way off the racetrack right there. He got in trouble in turn three, and in turn four, he had to shoot all the way to the right. And the reason I bring that up is through the S's, three, four, five, and six are where you get penalties. Well, here's the penalty. Watch the number nine. Yeah, the car bounced right there wrong, and he had to correct it to keep it going straight and just wound up way to the inside in turn four. I mean, it happened that fast, too. We saw the car right behind him, Kyle Busch, do that in qualifying, and it looked like the back tires came about six or eight inches up off the ground, and that's exactly what happened to Chase Elliott right there as well. Run at fifth, huge setback for the nine car. Yeah, Elliott will have to make a drive down pit road at pit road speed while the rest of the field races on. Behind him is Kyle Busch, then Tyler Reddick, then Christopher Bell, then Chris Buescher, who's the leading Ford in the race. Uh, the highest that the 17 has been all day. Uh, restarted eighth and is now in ninth. So in contention for a top 10 there, just in front of A.J. Allmendinger. I see those two line choices. Chris Buescher up the racetrack, a little more arc. A.J. Kind of straight into turn 15. Really shows you how that door can open up if you're willing to take it. Yeah, you make your you make yourself very vulnerable in traffic when you go up that far. Behind Almendinger, that's a Justin Haley coming into the picture. And this is another week that we talk about Justin Haley doing a good job. Um, one of my one of my I call him a kid. He's one of my favorites on on the circuit. Uh, just a good down to earth human. And every Every so often, he just shows up, whether it's in this car or a different car, he's done it year after year. It's usually when the challenge is the steepest, it's when Justin Haley shines the brightest. Now, those 11 cars back to Haley have uh, three seconds on the rest of the field. Briscoe, Truex, Van Gisberg, and Logano, and the rest. 28 laps to go at Circuit of the Americas. Ross Chastain out front as we take you Fox side by side. All right, so Ross Chastain continues on his race lead. William Byron again in second. He's eight-tenths of a second back. It's slowly closing. Uh, Byron was three-tenths of a second quicker than Chastain the last lap they ran. Ty Gibbs is currently sitting in third. He's 1.9 seconds off the lead. Alex Bowman, 2.6 seconds back in fourth. Chase Elliott, who is uh, scored in fifth right now, is going to have to make a pass-through penalty as of cutting the S's. So he's currently 4.9 seconds back, but... He uh, is going to be well outside the top 10 here shortly. Kyle Busch is in 6th place, 5.5 seconds off the lead. Tyler Reddick in 7th, 5.8 seconds back. Christopher Bell in 8th, 6.3 seconds off the lead. Chris Buescher, 7.1 seconds back in ninth, And A.J. Allmendinger rounds out the top 10, 7.6 seconds back. Uh, problems for Ryan Blaney. Uh, went wide, was kind of smoking the tires. I think he might have had a spin, it looked like, in turn 11. He'll lose several positions. Uh, right before the spin, he was running in the 18th place position, so he's going to be outside the top 20 now. It looked like he uh, had a little contact there from Bubba Wallace. I think Blaney overshot the corner, though, because Wallace was on his outside, and it looked like the 12 wasn't getting down on the curb uh, through the corner either, so I think Blaney might have overcooked it, and Wallace was there, and he ended up turning himself. That's what it looked like to me, and I'm a Ryan Blaney fan, so... Hate to admit his mistakes, but <laughs> it looked like he made a mistake there on that one. And it's going to bite him. Rough day for Blaine. He was able to salvage stage two a little bit by finishing second, staying out to get some stage points, but he has been outside the top 15 on pace all weekend. And it's going to stay the case here. Joey Logano started pretty deep in the field, though, up to 14th. So he's kind of slowly making his way up there and might have a shot at a top 10 at the end. He was one of the don't-have picks. Elliott now on pit road uh, having that penalty. And as you heard from Kyle Bush in radio communications with his team, as I say, that Bush is spinning in turn one. From fifth place, Kyle Bush with a spin is going to lose several positions. Bush or just uh, Briscoe, rather, just passed him 410. So I believe Bush is going to be in 11th as he gets back going in the right direction quickly. Not sure if there was contact or not there. Uh, Tyler Reddick was right behind him. 
Reddick has lost several positions since the restart. As this green flag run has gone on, he has been able to pace up with Byron Gibbs and Chastain. And with Byron and Gibbs, definitely seems to be the third wheel of the three fastest cars from yesterday's on-track activity through practice and qualifying. Quite a bit happening there on that side-by-side -side commercial break. So that's going to drop Bush out of the top five. That'll get Reddick back to fifth, I do believe. Bell will move up another spot and others. So Almendinger made a pass as well that last lap on Busher for eighth. He'll move to seventh with the Bush spin. So A.J. Almendinger now slowly moving up the leaderboard. Shane Van Gisbergen's moved to 13th place. A little bit behind where Bush ended up spinning. And Almendinger got by Christopher Bell, I do believe, as well, after Bell had to check up to miss the spinning Bush in turn one. Yeah, AJ up to sixth now. On the charge, he came close to winning in 2022. Battled on the last lap with Chastain for that win. and Might be in contention here. The last road course race as well in the Cup Series. Remember, Almendinger did win that race at the Roval last season. Trying to do it again here today. Those tires have to be shot for Bush. We expected him to pit as soon as the fuel window opened as well as a lot of other drivers. Uh, the fuel window expected to open at about 24 laps to go. So we are getting fairly close. About three or four laps away now. Uh, three laps away potentially from our first drivers hitting pit road for the final time today. And then trying to stretch that fuel window to the end in hopes that it doesn't go into overtime, and they don't want to catch a caution and be on the wrong side of it. Uh, Bush had fallen to 12th place. Looks like Truex got around him as well after he had spun. So, tough break for Kyle. He's battling with Martin Truex Jr. Back for that 11th place position again. Got into the back of him a little bit there out of uh, turn uh, four, it looked like. Or turn two, right before the S's, I believe. That's where that contact ended up taking place. Not hard contact, though. Still stays in line right behind him. Byron just slowly creeping in on Ross Chastain. When he initially got the second, he was about a second and a half off the race lead. Every lap, he's chipping away about two-tenths or so on Ross around this very long racetrack. Chastain's holding himself well. First time he's been in the lead today, had the clean air, and I got to say, it's definitely proven that he's got some speed. And Bell trying to get his position back on Almendinger after he had gotten passed by AJ again after Bush had spun. Bell was breaking a little more out of the exit of turn one. AJ took that, ran with it, but uh, could not run away from Christopher. And Bell moves back into sixth place, dropping AJ to seventh. Bell, remember, Bell ended up getting the Stage 1 win on top of running 6, so he might actually be one of the highest points getters in this race today when the checkered flag ends up falling. William Byron as well did get quite a bit of stage points because he had pitted from the lead in the early going to both stages, so he was actually one of the few drivers who did get stage points in both stages as well. I believe he finished 7th and 8th in the two stages, so 5 stage points for Byron, and again, currently 2nd, closing on Chastain. And he definitely closed quite a bit on Chastain in the back half of this last lap because he has gone from six tenths of a second off the lead now to the back bumper of Chastain as they work their way up the hill through turn one. About a two-car length difference into the braking zone. Long run speed. And the handling may be fading just a bit here for Chastain. Can he hold on before the green flag pit stops is going to be the question. And who will come out of green flag pit stops with the lead and how close together will these top three continue to be? as the gap is only about one second and about two and a half seconds between first and fourth as Bowman still in the picture here for the win as well. Alex picking it up. He's got two top five finishes in the first five races this season, including last week a fourth place run at Bristol. He's had great runs at Coda, top eights in all three old three-car battle in the last lap. And Byron needs to get by Chastain quickly before Gibbs has a shot to close on both of them. Deeper into the breaking zone goes Byron. That should give the leeway to Chastain off the exit of turn 11. Byron now going to try to use the draft to catch back up to him and potentially make a move into turn 12. Longest straightaway of the racetrack. Chastain not going to be aggressive trying to break the draft. Maybe a little bit there towards the end. 
Byron doesn't poke out to try to make a move. He didn't feel like he was close, but Chastain did lock the rear tires up just a little bit, and that causes him to go wide enough that Byron will get alongside Ross Chastain for the lead. Stadium section of the racetrack now, and it is going to be Byron who is not able to stay alongside Ross Chastain. Ross holds him off again. Now into the carousel. Byron, a wider entrance. All over the back of the one car of Ross Chastain. Can he get to him this time? Gibbs is closing. He's within eight-tenths of a second. Chastain up off of turn 19. Still has the lead. He'll head for 20. Byron looking low. He's going to outbreak him. William Byron alongside Chastain. Door-to-door -door for the race lead. Clean battle to this point. And now I'm going to try to side draft him. They get to the start-finish line. Chastain going to lead this lap. Not by much, but he does lead it. And now it's going to be Byron and Chastain up the hill into turn one. More of the bumps by Chastain. A crossover move to the bottom. Trying to overtake William Byron, who nearly cleared him getting into the corner. Chastain couldn't stick the awkward angle into turn one. And Byron will come out with the race lead. 25 laps to go. Lead change for the fifth time today. Uh, and now it is going to be William Byron out in front at Coda. Ty Gibbs is all over the back of the one now. He did close in exponentially after that battle for the lead went on. How quickly can he get by Chastain? The quicker he can get around the one of Chastain for second place, he will not allow Byron to pull away by much. Another spinner right around turn one, this time Brad Kisilowski, who is right around the back half of the field, and he'll fall back even further. Now currently scored 28th after the spin. Meanwhile, at the front of the field again, it is Byron Chastain Gibbs within a second. Bowman has closed his gap down to about 1.7 seconds of race leader William Byron as well. And we are on the brink of green flag pit stops. We may see drivers start to pit this time by. No caution so far today other than the stage ends at stage, or at lap rather, 15 and lap 30. So this would be the longest green flag run to the checker. If uh, this final stage obviously goes green to the end, being twice the length of stages one and two. Chastain not letting Byron pull away. He's doing a great job staying with him. Really the first time Byron's had a lot of pressure on him on a long green flag run. He's able to close in on Chastain, but Chastain not going anywhere. Picked up the pace on the first half of the first lap that Byron had passed Chastain for the race lead with. And again, Ty Gibbs is right there. I would not be shocked if Bowman was the fastest car on the track this last time by. Because he has closed the gap now under a half, a uh, second and a half rather. And Bowman's going to be the first to pit. This is big. If there's no speeding penalty here for Alex Bowman, he may come out with the race lead. As he's going to be the first to hit pit row. But he is going to be closer on fuel to the end of the race, obviously, by pitting earlier than the 24, the 1, and the 54. So he was a second and a half off the lead, just getting close enough to have some sort of a dirty air effect on the three cars in front of him. Decides to pit at that time. And again, we'll see where Bowman will cycle. On speed, he has had lap times somewhat similar to the four or three cars ahead of him. If not faster. This could be a great strategy call that could get Bowman out in front of him. Kyle Busch also won pit road this time by Bubba Wallace. Only a few cars hit pit road coming to 24 laps left in this race. And I expect Byron Chastain Gibbs to pit within another lap or two as well. Gibbs lost a little bit in the first half of lap 44. To Chastain and Byron, and again, Byron still staying within about two to three car lengths of William Byron. Chastain trying to get the draft now, headed downhill to turn 12. A lot of hard-breaking corners, sharp angled corners around this racetrack. And a lot of elevation changes to go along with it. Byron has cycled out of the pits. Uh, 22nd right now. The problem is, is he's got traffic with cars on older tires in front of him. So it's going to be tough to run clean laps, but we'll see if he can make this work. Again, Bowman on fresher tires. 
one of only three cars that hit pit road that last time, and he was the only one in the top ten to hit pit road the last time by. Coming up on turn 19. Anybody going to make the dive to pit road this time? Byron, Chastain coming in. Gibbs stays out at least one more lap. Mike Ross, Chastain's team told him to do exactly what the 24 does. If he pits, pit with it. If he doesn't, stay out there. Right now, Ross said the rear tires are just burning off and too much. I'm getting too loose in that run. Jamie? William Byron hasn't made any adjustments to this race car today. Saying it feels pretty good. Well. They also told him we're going to have to wait a couple more seconds. Let's pack it full of fuel. Make sure we make it to the end. Into his number one pit box, and you notice the 54 Ty Gibbs, he stayed out. Yeah, the Chevy's pitted the Toyota, stayed out. So Gibbs, Reddick, and Bell on a slightly different strategy are one, two, three. And here is Bowman coming down the straightaway, who has already made his stop. I think he's going to get Chastain without a doubt. That was the play, and he does. Yes, he does. Yes, sir, it worked. Good move by them. Chastain had a little bit of a slower stop, had trouble on his rear. I think that was the difference between him. You know, obviously he went in. Byron got through. But... All right, so Chastain cycles out behind Bowman, who's short pitted. Very slow stop, though, for Chastain because Byron still came out ahead of the 24. And remember that the 24 was only a couple car lengths ahead of the one when the pit stops began. Ty Gibbs stayed out on the track another lap. He's got some clean air, but still the older tires that now the 24, the 1, and the 48 have that he is going to be battling for the win with. Has to have a clean pit stop. Has to make sure he doesn't speed. And we will see where Ty Gibbs is going to cycle in the aftermath of green flag stops. Gibbs is just working his way through the carousel right now. So he's a couple corners away from more than likely coming onto pit road this time by. Tyler Reddick is currently second with Christopher Bell third. Uh, again, very few cars have actually hit pit road right now. Byron is 13th and first of the cars that have pitted, so at least 12 cars in front of him and still some behind him in the running order have to hit pit road. Uh, the gap between Bowman and Chastain is about one second, and the gap between Byron and Bowman is about three seconds, so a very blistering fast pit stop for that 24 team. And Gibbs is on his way in. It's Blaney at 11, and leader Ty Gibbs comes to pit road one lap after... Chevrolet. Ty Gibbs was the fastest of the four Gibbs when they unloaded yesterday. He really set the pace for the two. As he makes his way down pit road, it's going to be just four tires as he gives up the lead. First time today he's led. He's led one lap so far. No adjustment. He's the tear up for good vision to the end of this race. Regan. Hey, all the digger having a good day in the top 10 all day long, but felt like he burned the tires off his car, just struggling really bad when he got in traffic. Gibbs wheels out. So, uh, Ty Gibbs coming out of the pits. William Byron is ahead of him. Alex Bowman's going to be ahead of Gibbs. Fast stops by the Hendrick cars, and uh, Gibbs is going to be in front of Chastain. So Chastain will go from second to fourth in the cycle into green flag pit stops once everybody else hits pit road. Uh, Bowman going to be behind Byron. Two seconds is the gap between the 24 and the 48. Remember, these guys are still dealing with these traffic, uh, the traffic ahead of cars on older tires. So Byron doesn't have clean air until pretty much everybody cycles back through onto pit road. And we could be getting to the point where a lot of these drivers are just going to try to run this long just to be on a different strategy. And I'd be shocked if Blaney Hamlin do that only because they stayed out and pitted most recently, I guess, uh, before these current green flag pit stops have been going on. So that could be a possibility. Tyler Reddick's still on the racetrack, by the way. Reddick Bell did not pit with Gibbs, so alternating strategy by the Toyota drivers. Truex has scored third on our leaderboard. He's about 10 seconds behind where Reddick and Bell are at on the racetrack, but I would imagine these three will probably pit at the same time, although I'm surprised they didn't pit with the 54. So I could be wrong on that. Bell's been off the strategy compared to, like, almost everybody else all day today, too, so no clue exactly what he is going to have. Reddick coming in. And Christopher Bell going to stay out. So, no, the Toyotas will not all pit at the same time. Reddick is in now. And, again, Bell stays out now to retake the lead. Josh, and Tyler Reddick, it's from the leader. He comes in for what hopes to be the final stop for him. He said that car.
car is starting to get loose. The team tells him, come in, we'll get you those four tires and fuel as he looks to try and go back to back here in Austin. Zane Smith also coming into pit row. Martin Truex Jr. stays out on the racetrack along with his teammate Bell. Uh, Truex actually was about a second faster than Bell that last lap, so maybe not as much fall off for Truex. Michael McDowell still out on the racetrack. Poor Michael McDowell, man. He is going to be hes gonna be <laughs> one sorry SOB at the end of this race. He has uh, been without power steering for quite some time. Shane Van Gisbergen also still on the racetrack. Uh, Denny Hamlin still has to hit pit road. Ryan Blaney. Those are the top five cars. Byron is sixth. He passed Todd Gilliland on the racetrack moments ago. So just the top five ahead of Byron still have to hit pit road. And again, it's still a handful of drivers behind Byron in the running order that also have to hit pit road that were just further behind and did not cycle out ahead of the cars that have already pitted. By way of just being so far back in the actual running order. Around this very long 3.4 mile road course. Takes over two minutes to make a lap. Fastest laps of qualifying right around two minutes, nine seconds. Or two minute ten second lap times. It's amazing the difference between uh, yesterday and qualifying and today on the racetrack. Fastest lap times in qualifying, about three seconds faster than some of the fastest times that we've seen today. I think Alex Bowman has ran the fastest time of a 2 minute 11 second point eight eight nine second lap time. I think he is uh, one of the few drivers to run a lap time sub 2 minute 12 seconds in the race today. Obviously, you have to account for longer runs and maybe saving your tires a little bit more as well. Dirty air and traffic here where that was maybe not as much the case in group qualifying yesterday. Full screen commercial break on Fox. 20 laps to go in this one. Following the green flag pit stops, the top 10. Uh, well, we'll wait on that actually uh, just because... Not everybody cycled through. We'll just go through the top five real quick. Um, well, we'll just go through the top ten. Uh, Christopher Bell is the race leader. Martin Trix Jr. is second. Third place is Shane Van Gisberg and Denny Hamlin fourth. Ryan Blaney fifth. Again, those five still have to hit pit road. Uh, sixth place is William Byron. Alex Bowman seventh. Those have those two have already pitted. Todd Gillen still has to pit. He's in eighth. Ty Gibbs is already pit. He is in ninth. John Hunter Nemechek has not pitted. He is in 10th, and Chastain at 11th has already hit pit road as well. So those will be the top four once we have the rest of the field pit for the final time. You're listening live on KRC, NASCAR Cup Series Action at Coda, continuing onward. Sure to hit that like button as well if you guys haven't done so yet. 103 likes on the stream. Goal of 150. It's going to be tough to get there. This race is flying by with no incidental caution so far. We're down to just 20 laps to go in this race, and we are uh, still under the two-hour mark. Uh, just barely under the two-hour mark from the drop of the green flag. So fast race pace so far today. Trix's lap times, again, still about a second faster than Bell. I'm surprised Bell's staying out of the track as long as he is. Trix is definitely outpacing him right now. Actually, Bell's the slowest car on track. I mean, all the other cars that haven't hit pit road yet, Blaney, Hamlin, uh, SVG, and Truex, they're all faster than Bell. Nineteen to go, though. Bell stayed out on the track that last time by again. I believe the others in the top five have as well. Byron's within a second of Blaney and about two seconds behind Hamlin in fourth and fifth. Uh, Byron just got by Blaney for fifth now during this commercial break. And Christopher Bell did pit. So Bell did pit from the lead. Truex stayed out. So Truex will take over the race lead for the first time. By Toyota. Let's go places. And by Wendy's Classic Hamburgers. 
Christopher Bell in the pits. His last lap under green was three seconds slower than William Byron on the same lap they had to come. Look at lower left. William Byron's pit crew three seconds faster than Ross Chastain's, and that made all the difference. Martin Truex Jr. is now cycled through to the lead over Van Gisbergen and Byron. Then Hamlin and Blaney, all of whom have a stop to come. So by way of pit sequence, I would expect Van Gisbergen to come to pit road next, and then if Truex... Hamlin Blaney were to just run this out as long as they can. It's going to be a minute before they end up hitting pit road. Byron just passed Hamlin on the racetrack, so the only two cars in front of him currently on the leaderboard would be Truex and SVG. Bowman just passed Ryan Blaney, still got to get by Hamlin. So there is a slower car between the eventual top two yet. And the gap between those two, when they initially came out of the pits, was about three seconds. The gap now between Byron and Bowman is about two seconds. And it did close. Bowman closed in a second within a lap or two. I think that was when Byron was still on cold tires that first lap. He was a second quicker. But then once they got heat in the tires, they pretty much been running identical lap times. So I we'll see. I mean, I guess it's just a matter of whose tires are going to fall off first with having to go 24 laps, which will be the longest stint on tires that anybody has gone today. And SVG has just pitted from second place, this time by Truex. Hamlin Blaney continue to stay out on the racetrack. And I would expect anywhere between five to six more laps for fuel that Truex, Hamlin, and Blaney will be able to go. Uh, no, Hamlin actually came in too. So Hamlin also pitted. Truex and Blaney stay out. Down to just 18 laps remaining. That's Circuit of the Americas, lap 50. Still no caution for incident to this point. Stage ends at lap 15. Lap 30, William Byron has led the most laps today. 25 laps led. He is currently second, waiting for Truex to pit. Might catch him on pace. He's definitely going to catch him on pace if Truex tries to run this out. Um... Well, last lap, Byron was only six-tenths of a second quicker than Truex, but I think he had to deal with, obviously, passing a couple cars there, like Hamlin and Blaney, so that might have factored into that lap time a little bit. But Yeah, not a whole lot of tire fall-off, for the most part. Similar to the road course races a season ago. Even with the slight modulation to the rules package for this weekend compared to what we saw in the road courses the last two years in cup. All right. So we're going to have a busy Saturday, early afternoon morning next week. Our live commentary schedule uh, is going to look like this. We will have cup series practice and qualifying live stream right here on the channel next Saturday morning at 10 30 AM Eastern Daylight time. So Eastern time next weekend, 1030 a.m. We will have practice and qualifying for you. Another early start just like we had yesterday. Our Xfinity Series race coverage will begin at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time a few hours after the fact. So 1.30 for the Xfinity race. And we will have Cup Series practice qualifying for you guys on the same live stream as well at 10.30 a.m. That is Saturday's coverage. Doubleheader there. Trucks are off next week. So no stream for the Truck Series. And our Cup Series action, it is an Easter Sunday night race. Uh, so we will begin our live commentary coverage, uh, I believe, at 5.30. I'll, I'll update that time uh, once I get the start time of the race for next week. But looking at about 5.30 Eastern time next Sunday. Easter Sunday. But it is a night race at Richmond. Our first night race of the season. William Byron has retaken the race lead as Martin Truex Jr. pits from the race lead. Blaney, Gillen, Nemechek all on pit road as well. So everybody uh, that has had to hit pit road has hit it now, at least for the top five. I believe Corey LaJoy uh, still has to hit pit road in ninth place as well. Um, once LaJoy pits, though, I think everybody will have already pitted. Uh, Kobayashi might have to pit also. He is in 14th. So 
There's still several drivers that have to pit, I guess, yet, but uh, they're all mid or back of the pack at this point. 17 laps left. Byron leads 1.8 seconds over Alex Bowman. Can Bowman close the gap? Gibbs 4.7 seconds back in third. Tyler Reddick is fourth. Ross Chastain fifth. Christopher Bell sixth. Chris Buescher seventh. AJ Allmendinger eighth. I mentioned Corey LaJoy still has the pit, but he's currently scored ninth. Kyle Busch, even after a spin, is in tenth. Chase Briscoe 11th. Martin Truex Jr. 12th. 13th for Justin Haley. Kamui Kobayashi 14th. Chase Elliott is 15th. Kobayashi still has the pit. I think Truex timed on pit road in 12, so he will not be running there once he gets out of the pits. Uh, Chase Elliott's in 15th place. Had a penalty for cutting the asses earlier. One of only a couple drivers to have that problem today. Joey Logano 16th. Bubba Wallace 17th. Ryan Blaney 18th. 19th for Kyle Larson. Zane Smith 20th. Austin Sinder 21st. Denny Hamlin 22nd. Harrison Burton 23rd. Ryan Priest 24th. Shane Van Gisbergen is 25th. 26th for Austin Dillon. John Hunter Nemechek 28th. Daniel Suarez 29th. Kaz Grella 30th. Todd Gillen 31st. 32nd for Brad Keselowski, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 33rd, Eric Jones, 34th, and last car on the lead lap is Noah Gregson in 35th. Timmy Hills, 36th, Josh Berry, 37th. Uh, both those two are one lap down. Daniel Hummer, two laps down to 38th. And Michael McDowell still limping it without power steering on the racetrack. Well, slower than everybody else is seven laps down. Uh, still on the racetrack, though. So, again, 35 cars on the lead lap. All 39 that started the race are in the race. And William Byron has led the most and currently back in the lead again. 20 laps led in County for Byron, who also started on the pole in this race. Your stage winners, Denny Hamlin, led three laps, staying out at the end of stage two. And Bell has led nine laps during green flag pit stop sequence, as well as staying out of the pits and just staying out to get the stage one win as well. Uh, pitted early under green in stage two, so that's how he led nine. Ross Chastain led for 10 laps after... Uh, getting to the lead on a restart where Byron ended up blowing the first turn, fell to third, eventually ended up getting back by Chastain over the long haul of this green flag run in the final stage, but that is where Chastain was able to lead his 10 laps today. Last lap, now that Byron has the clean air again, put a heck of a lap together, seven tenths of a second quicker than Alex Bowman, uh, and Byron ran the fastest lap on racetrack. Ty Gibbs was the second fastest car on track, a tenth behind Byron's last lap, but quicker than Bowman. So we could have a battle for second here before the end. Still could have a battle for the lead if Byron's tires do fall off, even though we haven't had a lot of tire fall off to this point in the race. As again, there's about a two and a half second difference uh, right now between the top two on the racetrack. 16 laps is a long time though around Coda. Anything could happen at this point. And we'll see if anything will happen. Chase Elliott just passed Justin Haley on the racetrack for 12th. Change of position there. And after cycling off of pit road, Truex fell to 18th. Denny Hamlin 20th. And Ryan Blaney 23rd. SVG 24th after he came out of the pits. Uh, slightly fresher tires for SVG. I think he was 28th, but has quickly passed four cars. Uh, so that is, I guess, the bright spot of standing out as long as they did. Is now they will have fresher tires than some of those others to the end, and they'll try to get some of that track position back. So alternating pit strategy at that point in time. I still don't think we're going to see very many drivers hit pit road if we do get a caution at any point in time, whether that be later into this final stage or within the next few laps. Uh, we got another spinner, and it's Kamui Kobayashi right around turn 11. Second time he's gone for a spin today. First time he was off the front bumper of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. This time not sure exactly what happened. Wait and see if we get a replay. Keselowski. Maybe. No, it looked like Josh Berry went wide. Berry went wide and ended up getting into Kobayashi, it looked like. These guys were outside the top 30, by the way, where this took place. <laughs> Battling nearly three wide outside the top 30 between Keselowski, Barry, and Kobayashi. Top break there for Kamui. Uh, Tyler Reddick also was able to get by Chastain on the racetrack. Chastain also lost another spot during this green flag run to Bell. Bell now into the top five. And remember, Christopher stayed out a little bit longer than... A lot of the other drivers in the top 10, really, he was the last of the drivers in the top 10 to hit pit road. So he's got a few lap fresher tires than everybody else. Uh, that last lap, Christopher Bell was actually two tenths quicker than race leader William Byron. 
Two tenths when you're at a 12 second deficit with 15 laps to go is not going to be enough to catch the 24, but I think he definitely could get to Reddick. Uh, he is within a couple seconds of him. Maybe has a shot at Gibbs. That's even going to be a bit of a push, but we get a caution and a bunch up. I mean, maybe this could work out well for Christopher Bell and he could be in contention for the win in that scenario. Byron, another couple tenths quicker than Bohm in the last lap. Byron was my pick to win, and a lot of the reason I mentioned it in the pre-race and I'll reiterate again is because of the execution that Hendrick Motorsports and really William Byron seems to do. Byron is a driver who's going to make the most of his equipment. Coming into the day, he was fastest in practice, and he started on the pole. So coming in, you could argue he had the fastest car by way of on-track activity so far this weekend. And when he has had these kinds of weekends, he has gotten the win. Very rarely you'll see him have an incident where he either speeds on pit road, makes a mistake behind the wheel on the racetrack, and over pushes the issue. We've seen drivers, you know, be able to take underfunded equipment and take it to the top. Byron's a guy that if you have an eighth place car, he's going to finish eighth. He's not going to do any better. He's not going to do any worse. He's going to he's going to essentially just not make mistakes. He's not going to put himself in a position where he is going to make a mistake. And his pit crew is one of the best in the series. We saw that pit crew. Uh, compared to Chastain, three seconds faster on pit road there, even pitting about a lap after Alex Bowman, who was able to cycle ahead of Gibbs and uh, Chastain during green flag pit stops, couldn't cycle ahead of Byron because of how fast that 24's pit crew was. So that plays into hand. He's got one of the best crew chiefs, I think, in the NASCAR Cup Series. They gel really well together. That's Rudy Fugel ever since he has come aboard the pit box, come aboard the pit box of the 24 team. Uh, it has really rejuvenated Byron's young career. Um, they've got a Daytona 500 together, obviously, already this season, and Byron looking to be the first multi-time winner in the Cup Series this season. He'll be the only driver in the top three series other than Austin Hill in the Xfinity Series to have more than one win this season if he's able to hold on. Chase Elliott going to go for a spin right around Turn 8. Not sure what happened there, uh, but uh, Chase Elliott Turn 8 has gone for a spin, and he falls from about 12th to 17. Five more positions lost for the 9 of Elliott as his final stage continues to worsen on. 13 laps to go this time by. Eleven lead changes, most of those green flag pit stops cycling, and then obviously on that restart where Chastain leapfrogged Byron, Byron got it back. Uh, that was really the only passes for the lead under green flag conditions that didn't include uh, pit stops today. So overall, uh, an actual green flag run, Byron has not been passed, but he has been beaten on a restart. Uh, he beat himself that one restart. You don't see that a lot out of Byron, I just mentioned that, but obviously ended up uh, getting it back. He had the car to do so, and he's taken care of his tires very well during these long green flag runs. But again, this will also be the longest green flag run of the day. On these tires specifically, they're going to have to go anywhere between 22 to 24 laps, depending on what lap you exactly pitted. Uh, some of those other drivers who pitted a little bit after the fact, they're not going to have to go quite as long, you know, like a Hamlin, Blaney, those guys. I mean, they're only going to have to go about 17, 18 laps, but uh, still going to be the longest for anybody so far today. Really, the only driver who's gone as long as they could on tires already was Christopher Bell. Uh, so he's really got the best feed for what tires are going to feel like after 20 laps because he didn't pit at all, not only during stage one, but at the end of stage one as well. Uh, stayed out of the pits and pitted in the middle to early going of stage two for that first pit stop of the day for him. So he had an alternating strategy after staying out to get the stage win. Uh, so he's the only one that's really pushed their fuel as far as they could go already once today, as well as the tires. And that also could be, Another reason why his lap times are quicker than anybody else on the racetrack right now. Because they're even quicker than the guys like Blaney, Hamlin, and Truex who pitted most recently. Granted, they probably have a lot heavier traffic in front of them, but Bell is the fastest car on the track right now. And that last lap, he was a half a second quicker than Byron. He's still 11.7 seconds off the lead, but a 3.4-mile racetrack coming up on 12 laps to go this time by. Something could be had there.
109 likes on the stream. Be sure to hit that like button if you guys haven't done so yet. As we continue our live commentary coverage at Coda for the NASCAR Cup Series. Bowman slipping back. He definitely doesn't have the pace to keep up with Byron. He's 3.7 seconds off the lead now. It was 1.8 seconds once Byron had gained the race lead away after Truex, Blaney, and Hamlin had pitted. So Bowman's lost two seconds to Byron in about the last six laps, which equates to about a third of a second a lap slower. So that's about three-tenths. A three and a half tenths a lap slower on average than Byron. And Ty Gibbs is now within about a second of Bowman. Again, in a potential battle for second, which could be coming up in the waning laps. Bell's within a couple tenths of Reddick now. He was two seconds behind him a few laps ago, but running the fastest laps on the racetrack, he has closed on him. One... Uh, Two minute, 12 second flat lap time nearly for Bell that last lap. Two minute, 12.9 second for race leader William Byron. But again, he is over 10 seconds off the lead. There's a lot of time to get there. 12 laps is a lot of laps by way of this racetrack. Very unique compared to really any other track we go. It's the longest racetrack on the circuit now that road america is not on the schedule for the cup series side of things that is a four mile road course but cup series only had two run-ins there 2021 and 2022 hopefully we see that track back on the circuit at some point in time had a good fan turnout for a couple years and it seemed like the fans uh liked it a couple years we had it As someone who picked Byron to win, I really don't want to see a caution. I'd, li I'd like to see this just play out right now. Uh, Gibbs was a little bit faster than Byron the last lap, too, and the Toyotas in Stage 1 did have a better long-run pace than Willie B. Maybe don't count Gibbs out of it quite yet. See, I give by Bowman pretty quickly here, but Gibbs was faster than William Byron the last lap. And again, these guys have not had to go longer than 12 or 13 green flag laps on tires today. So 24, that's quite a bit more longer than that. Maybe Gibbs isn't out of it. We could see a good finish here. Bell, by the way, is still chopping at that lead and during the commercial break moved from 5th to 4th past Tyler Reddick. And Bell's within nine and a half seconds of the leader. He's got some clean air to work with because he's five seconds behind Gibbs. So he can really put some good time trial laps together here until he ends up catching more than likely Bowman once Gibbs gets by the 48. And even Bowman attempt quicker than Byron the last lap as well. So again, whose tires are going to be fading faster? Byron got out to that 3.8 second lead, but was he pushing too hard too early? And we are at 11 laps to go in this race. Down to about a little less than 10 and a half laps left now. And I'll let you listen into some of the broadcast here for a little bit as we click by some of these late laps in this race. Well, I think Gibbs is the one that has the opportunity with 11 to go. Yeah, in order to have the opportunity, though, he's going to have to go quick right now. As soon as he gets to him, he's going to have to do something with that 48 car of Alex Bowman. And the other question is, okay, William Byron sees his lead. How much is he just trying to take care of his car and pace himself? He's really cutting into this right to the right bumper of 48. Where is he setting it up? For the top of the hill in turn one. That's the next passing opportunity to try to... Narrow this gap up as much as you can, set him up for the top of the hill. It may not happen this time. Well, the hard part with, with everything that, that happens, the closer you get, the harder it gets to go by the car in front of you. So, you you, you know, you, you got to have a pretty timely opportunity to get where you need to be or a lot better car. But you can see Alex Bowman's car wiggle around there on the exit, and that's where the Gibbs cars are strong. 
Uh, it's about three or four car lengths between Bowman and Gibbs for second place. Ten laps to go, so we'll take our final box side-by-side -side break in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. I wasn't expecting that quick of a commercial break. <laughs> I was expecting to get, up, get a drink real quick and then uh, come back for the finish, but I guess we get another commercial break from Fox's side of things. Uh, so we'll just run through the uh, top 10 real quick of the running order and the intervals between them. Uh, again, that last time by at the line, William Byron, 3.7 seconds ahead of Alex Bowman. Uh, for second place is Bowman. Ty Gibbs in third, 4.2 seconds off the lead. Bell has trimmed his deficit down to nine seconds behind race leader William Byron in fourth place. Tyler Reddick in fifth, 14 and a half seconds off the lead. 16 and a half seconds off the lead is Chastain in sixth. A.J. Allmendinger is about 19 seconds off the race lead. Uh, 19 and a half seconds back is Chris Buescher in eighth. Kyle Busch is 21 and a half seconds off the lead in ninth. And Chase Briscoe is 23.3 seconds off the race lead in 10. So that is your top 10 in the running order right now. Two Chevys at the top, followed by three Toyotas. Another two Chevys, a Ford Chevy Ford, uh, is the Manufacturer Alliance inside the top 10. And we'll uh, go through the predictions running order side of things. Uh, it took Byron to win the race. Obviously, one of the must-haves he is leading. Ty Gibbs was another must-have slash sleeper pick in third. Might have a shot at the win here late still. Bowman, by the way, faster than Byron that last lap, as well as Gibbs. So they are closing on the 24 right now. Uh, Tyler Reddick was the other sleeper slash uh, must-have pick in fifth place. Uh, the only actual like sleeper sleeper pick I had, I guess, technically would have been Shane Van Gisbergen, currently 22nd, had a speeding penalty on pit road when he was running 10th. Uh, so that has put him back. And as far as the don't have picks, uh, all three of them are outside the top 10 for right now. Logano's got the closest shot of getting that top 10 as he is currently 13th. Trix just passed him, uh, so that drops Logano back a spot. But he is still outside the top 10. Kislowski's had a terrible day. He spun uh, once, and uh, he had a car spin around him another time or two. 31st for Keselowski. And Michael McDowell having the power steering issues made a bold prediction there. He's really good on road courses, but... Uh, Hadn't had the speed at all this weekend. Was outside the top 25 in practice of qualifying. Didn't trust that he can get back into the top 10. And that was not the case uh, both before and now since the steering issues. But that has led him to a last place run as of right now with 39 laps to go. But he is still on the racetrack nine laps down. 83.38 mile per hour average race speed to this point. Still just under two and a half hours after the drop of the green flag. But just nine laps to go in this race. We'll take our final ad break. You're listening live to the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas on KRC. Bell has cut it to seven seconds to lead a William Byron. Tyler Reddick back. Behind Bowman and Gibbs, where these two have kept in uh, close company all day. Bowman riding a 66 race winless streak. Gibbs looking for win number one. Just got stalled out behind Bowman, hasn't he, Kevin? Yeah, and that's that's typically you know what happens. So you have to have a distinct advantage somewhere in order to in order to finish that pass off. So you see Bowman miss right there. So that opens the door for Ty Gibbs to to get further to the right and set this turn 15 up and be in position. As he gets towards the end of the lap, he misses the apex again. Now, Christopher Bell is closing on them. He's about three seconds behind that battle for second place. Oh, Kozlowski around again from 31st place. He has not had much fun today. Oh. Still on the lead lap. Yeah, All right. had a chance at it. Here we go. He's got to get up off this corner. He's got to go for it. I think time. so. I think you're right, Clint. He knows he's way better, and he's got to go now. There it is. Oh, order. Had to use a little bit here. He was still free. Nice to him, just like he was with Chastain. Now he lost the position into this next corner. Well, that turn one was a good corner for Gibbs. And he moves through to take second place. Well, that was a little nicer to him than Chastain was. 
Alex Bowman knew that if they went into the SS side by side, they were going to have trouble. And he also knew that Ty Gibbs was way faster. Smart move by Alex Bowman. He and Bell's coming. Yeah. Try to. No. And, and, uh, and when, when we say smart move, it's just it minimizes the time loss when you just don't sit there and race somebody and slow everybody down a second a lap or a second and a half a lap. And then all of a sudden, instead of losing one spot, um, if you sit there and wait, Bell might be there right with you in one lap. And that's part of the science of road racing. Pick the place to pass where it's going to slow down your lap time the least for both you and the car you're passing. In this case, turn one. Clinton, I know that we talked about this during the break. We really thought Tyler Reddick would be one of the one of the cars to beat this weekend. I think in the past, be the one that stink up the show. Yeah, and, but I, I think that shows you how good these guys are and how they go back and they study the the driving information and everything that that goes with why he was fast and they get better. It's a constant evolution with everything that happens in the NASCAR Cup Series garage, from the drivers to the crew chiefs. Totally agree. Now, Ross Chastain is catching Reddick. He was a couple of tenths quicker that last lap, while uh, A.J. Allmendinger is about three seconds behind that group, Regan. Well, Mike, this was a deal that came together very late for A.J. Allmendinger. It was a, actually three weeks ago they decided to bring this car. Told me earlier today that they struggled in practice to get it perfect, just couldn't quite get it dialed in. But he's been pretty solid today, just a little bit off all day long. Josh? Let's we'll start with Chris Buescher. This is a race that he felt very confident coming into. Feels always confident on road courses. He's finished top 11. In the last 11, he's had a quiet day. Started in the back of work. As far as the eight of Kyle Busch going into the race, Randall Burnett told me this car was okay, but not good enough to win. to Chase Briscoe having a solid day today. Yesterday qualifying a little bit of trouble. Qualified 28. He felt like it was a 10th and 15th place car today. That is exactly what he's doing right now. Running in 10th is optimizing the day. you got to do that throughout the stretch of the season, even if you don't have the best race car on every single day. Justin Haley having a good day. He's hung around the top 10 uh, all day long. That's a fantastic knocking out of the park day for that race team. Mark Truex just went by for 11th, and here now is the race for third. Christopher Bell continues to close on the leaders, but he can't waste a lot of time getting past Bowman if he's going to have a chance to run for the front. Well, that's the last corner he's going to be behind Alex Bowman because he's going to he's going to have a good shot to pass him right here. Well, I say that, and Alex Bowman drives away. It's just a matter of corners, though. He's still going to dive to the inside. And he's got a pretty distinct tire advantage on, on Alex Bowman of five laps, which is, when you think about it, it's a long ways here, yeah, right? Over 15 miles, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Brad Koslowski has come to pit road with seven to go. And now Bell is 5.7 behind with seven laps to go. And Gibbs, three seconds back with seven to go, but matching lap times with Byron right now is Ty Gibbs. Yeah, I, I can't help but to think, I think Byron's just got the reins pulled back just a little bit, saving a little bit of fuel for his crew chief, just in case something happens at the end of this thing. Just keeping him at arm's length, right, Kevin? You're the leader. Yeah, you got to be smart when you're when you're that far ahead and, and you've got everything under control. You got to not only save save some fuel and do the best that you can with that side of it, but just slow down. There's no reason to run qualifying laps, and that way you save some tires, put yourself in a position that if you need some more car at the end of the race, uh, you can make some lap times. With six to go, let's get back uh, in the field. Joey Logano in 12th, had trouble during qualifying, cut the course, had a lap disallowed, and uh, started deep in the field. With Logano now to 12th, uh, we've mentioned Haley, who's currently 13th. Jamie, how about Bubba Wallace? Bubba Wallace started 10th on lap number one, had that contact, knocked the front toe out. They have worked on this race car, he even spun again later on in the race. They stopped four times and jumped on it, and they can't keep digging. In three previous starts here, though, that's finish ever 37. Mike, if he can keep it in the top 15, it's a pretty good day for this team. It would be. 
Uh, behind him, Kyle Larson, who had a spin earlier in the race. Again, no cautions for anything other than the two stage breaks, but here is Larson in 16th place. Well, there's going to be some drivers with their tongue hanging out. I, I can't express to you, uh, folks sitting at home, how much work this is. As we look at Zane Smith, he's had a rough start to the season with some bad luck and, and have some decent, has a decent day going. Hamlin Elliott Sindrick complete the top 20. We still have 36 cars on the lead back to Noah Gregson with six to go. Here's Alex Bowman in fourth. We listened in. 50 feet of left and 11, 12, and 1. 50 feet of fuel. I was telling him I need 10% of fuel on his lift on the big straightaway. That's just backing them corners up. Give me a little bit. Let that thing roll off in there a little bit farther before you downshift but live. Save some fuel for me. Almendinger and Chastain might have been a little contact there. Well, Alex, Alex Bowman um, last pitted on lap 44, so he was among the leaders, the first one, and he's a lap sooner than the guys that he's racing around currently. So he, it's a long ways around. It's 3.4 miles around this racetrack, so it's a long ways to make one lap. So Almendinger up to sixth ahead of Chastain. Four Chevys, three Toyotas in the top seven spots. Then Busher's four. With five to go, Larry Mack. What do the trends tell us? Well, Mike, there's 35 drivers on the lead lap. There's 34 that may love to hear this. William Byron's probably the only one that does not. If you look at the last two years here in the era of the Gen 7 car, at Austin, Texas, the last caution came averaged lap 66, two to go in both races, ended in overtime finishes. Wow. Christopher Bell, last lap, eight tenths quicker than William Byron, but he's four seconds behind with five to go. And teammate Ty Gibbs just ahead. saw a pretty good slip up off 11, eliminated his chances of getting the pass done in 12. Have to regroup and maybe get close enough to him where the next opportunity would be at the top of the hill in one. So Bell's final pit stop came three to four laps after uh, the cars that he is battling for the win. Uh, it makes his car faster now with better tires, but did he lose so much time in those three or four laps that he stayed out before he pitted to put it behind the eight ball now. Possibly, but yes. he, he did. Yeah, he definitely lost some, some lap time there, but he's also it's also the reason that he's gaining it back uh, with, with the lap time now having the fresher tires. So kind of half a dozen one way or the other as to, as to where he was going to gain it or lose it, but he's still got a great car. We get a caution. He says he had a slower pit stop as well than the race leader. Well, he actually said two and three quarters a second. So if you think about that, look over there at the lap times and how far he's behind. That would definitely put him in the second a lot closer to William Byron right now. Pit stop. Four laps to go. Well, Jamie, the class of the field on that last stop, 224. Well, you guys talked about it, Mike. William Byron's pit crew, these guys right here, three seconds faster than Ross Chastain. Not got them back in the lead. But how about the guy up top? Rudy Fugel brought a car so good. No adjustments have been made today. This pit crew can focus on fueling and putting more tires on that car in their stops. Well, the tin car, I think it was Gregson around backwards in eight. Probably in that dirt, flipped up. I think he got back going. There's that Team 24 crew that have made the difference for William Byron today. You saw how the focus, laser focus in Rudy, Rudy Fugel's eyes right there. Come on, no caution, no caution. That's what he's saying right now, over and over and over. Yeah, when you're leading these races like that, there's nothing more stressful than the crew chief sitting up on the box and even, even in the driver's seat as we see Ty Gibbs and Christopher Bell going at it here for this second position. 
And as you see these two battle, you can see Byron is not very far ahead of the, them. That is a good job by William Byron and his crew chief and the communication of just, just save enough, keep them at, at arm's length, but uh, save me some fuel in the meantime, and we'll tell you the lap times, and they're doing a great job of that. Just keep these reins pulled back just a little bit, just in case. This has got to be frustrating for Christopher Bell. This is going to be the slowest lap he has run since his pit stop. Well, that's that traffic we talk about. It just when you get when you get right there and you can't take the momentum and, and get by. But well, there's only what two or three quality uh, passing zones on this racetrack. So if you don't get it done in one of them, you got to wait all the way around to the next. Definitely cuts into your lap time. Not close enough to make the move at turn one. Yeah, and as a driver, it's frustrating because everywhere that you need to get off the corner and, and put the throttle down, you make a mistake, and then you have to make that gap back up, and it seems like you make a mistake in all the wrong spots. That was a second slower by Byron that time. Again, I think that's just saving a little bit of fuel just in case, getting to the end of this thing. But you never know. you got to keep an eye on that. If they're saving, they're doing it for a reason. One of the Northeast's greatest modified drivers in history, Ed Flemke, once in a race at Stafford, caught the leader easily, passed him, but could never get away. And I asked him at Victory Lane, and went, Eddie, you know, you caught him, you had no problem. Why couldn't you just drive away? And after we did the interview, he came up, he punched me in the arm, he says, kid, you run just slow enough to win. Yeah. William Byron out front after a lap of 214.2. Bell and Gibbs running right at 213 flat. And that makes that race for second place really important because we don't know all the information. Maybe they are short. We don't we don't think that, that William Byron is short, but there he's got him. Second never, place. You never know that Bell could pass for the win. With three to go. He is one second faster than William Byron. He has almost three seconds to make up. In these final couple of laps, can he do it? Well, I think this next time by will tell the story on just how much William Byron is saved. And there's no question he slowed down that last lap one second while those two teammates were battling his rear view here. Yeah, and half this lap was, was behind Gibbs as well, so it's still going to be the next lap that he's going to be back. All right, fastest car on the racetrack's got two laps to get to the race leader, that being Christopher Bell. Uh, at the start-finish line this time by, he is going to be about 2.4 seconds off of the race leader. Byron has dominated the race today, but does he have the tires capable to hold off Bell, who has about five lap fresher tires of his own? Took him a while to get by Ty Gibbs once he got to him, but uh, finally was able to do so that last lap. Through turn one, Byron doing pretty good. Uh, actually pulled away about a tenth on Bell. I noticed through the S's the last couple laps, that seems to be where Byron's losing a little bit of time compared to those two Toyotas behind him. Maybe just trying to make sure he doesn't make a mistake and shortcut the S's, knowing that he's not the car on the attack. Got to get through turn eight. This is a make or break corner as well. Byron working through eight right now. No major slip up. Christopher Bell, Ty Gibbs still pushing hard behind. Gap is down to 2.1 seconds, so in the first half of this lap, maybe about four-tenths of a second was gained by William or by uh, Christopher Bell on William Byron. Still about a two-second lead. Out of turn 11, down the long straightaway. Bell not really too close to get a draft off of Byron right now. Um, we'll see next time by if he can maybe get that gap within a second, then he would definitely be able to get close enough to draft down this long straightaway. It's going to be tough for Bell, but we'll see if he can do it. And it'll be Byron into the stadium section of the racetrack. Turns 13 and 14. Still holding about a two-second lead over Christopher Bell. Bell had a big slip-up coming out of turn 14 off the curb. Rear tires are sliding out from underneath him just a little bit. And he actually lost about a tenth as a result. Is back to 2.1 second lead again. He's going to need a major mistake out of William Byron if he's going to catch him now. He might be faster than him, but it, he's just not fast enough to get there in the little amount of time he needs to make this pass for the race win. There's a strategy that uh, 
Got him to second at least where he was running, I believe, about sixth, fifth or sixth place before the pit stop started. So it has cycled him up in the running order, but may not get the uh, checkered flag at the end of it. We are on the final lap right now. Byron working his way through turn one. Bell's put a little bit of a gap between himself and Ty Gibbs. Still about a second and a half off the race lead. Last lap overall, he was 7 tenths of a second quicker, but he would have to be 1.7 seconds quicker to catch William Byron on the final lap of the race. And I think the quickest lap he had ran on him in the second half of this run was about 8 tenths of a second. So William Byron just needs to keep doing what he's doing, really, and he should be able to hold him off. Through turn eight, Christopher Bell down to about a second off the race lead. Might be close enough up. Uh, my, I can't talk now. <laughs> Might be close enough up of turn 11 to uh, get some sort of a draft off the 24 car. Bell's still trying to put a charge on. Yeah, one second gap between the 24 and the 20. Good job by Byron not making a major mistake. And a good job by Bell, pushing as hard as he is, not making a major mistake yet on this final lap. Way deeper into the breaking zone goes Christopher Bell. He's pushing with all he's got to try to catch this 24. It's going to give Byron a slightly better drive off. Uh, no major time gain or loss that time for Bell through turns 13 and now 14. About to enter the carousel, still one second off the race lead. Looks to be about six or seven car lengths of a difference between Byron and Bell. Byron mitigating that gap over Christopher Bell and Ty Gibbs for really about the last seven or eight laps since they had gotten by Bowman for position. Out of turn 19, headed for turn 20 now. It'll be William Byron, the first to two wins on the NASCAR Cup Series 2024 season. He's going to win the first road course race of the year at Coda. Second career road course win for Byron as he captures the checkered flag in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. No incidental cautions today. A short two-hour, 43-minute, nine-second race. Shortest race so far of the NASCAR Cup Series season. 84.22 mile per hour average race speed. And again, the only cautions would have been the stage breaks at lap 15 and lap 30. Byron, class of the field today, leads 43 laps en route to his victory. Your stage winners, Denny Hamlin and uh, Christopher Bell. Bell finished second. Good points day for him. I believe he's going to end up with the most points of any driver today. Uh, finishing second, getting a stage win in there as well. Uh, Byron getting five stage points and a race win. I told you before the start of the day, not only that I said that Byron was going to win, but I would be shocked if somebody who started outside the top four won. The top three finishers of today's race all started in the top four. Track position was key. There were no cautions for incident. That only made it uh, more so the fact. By the way, that other driver who did not uh, finish in the top four, that qualified top four was Reddick. He finished fifth just outside the top four. So uh, qualifying very important at Coda and on these road course races, especially without any uh, cautions for incident, and that proved to be the case here today. Congratulations to William Byron. Again, his second race win of 2024. He was the most winningest driver a season ago, third in the overall standings at the end of it. We'll see if he can get the championship at the season's end. He's off to a good start. You win the Daytona 500. That's obviously a dream. And now uh, two wins here in these first five races. He had two wins in the first four races last year, two wins in the first five, uh, first six races, excuse me, this season. Michael McDowell, I believe, did end up pulling into the garage late. Uh, so he was the only driver that DNF today with the power steering issue, 17 laps down, 34 cars did finish on the lead lap. We'll go through the finishing order real quick while well, Byron's got a long ways to go to get all the way back around the racetrack to the front stretch before his burnout, and you'll get to listen in to his race-winning interview. You'll also get to listen in to an interview from some of the uh, other top finishers of today's race as we go through our post-race edition of this NASCAR Cup Series live commentary stream. 
Byron with the race wins, six tenths of a second margin of victory over Christopher Bell, who made a good charge to go from 12 seconds off the lead to second place uh, in that final green flag tire stent, which lasted about 20 laps for him. Uh, Ty Gibbs finishes third here today, four straight top tens for Gibbs now. Alex Bowman with back-to-back -back top four finishes, another fourth place run, just as he did a week ago here this week at Coda. Tyler Rennick with a fifth place finish, A.J. Allmendinger sixth, Ross Chastain seventh, Chris Buescher eighth, Kyle Busch ninth, and Martin Tricks Jr. rounded out the top ten. Four Toyotas, five Chevys, and one Ford in the top ten at the end of the race today. That lone Ford again was Busher in eighth. Uh, Joey Logano finishes in 11th place, Ryan Blaney 12th, Chase Briscoe 13th, 14th place finish for Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace 15th, Chase Elliott 16th, Justin Haley 17th, Kyle Larson 18th, 19th, Austin Sindrick, Zane Smith in 20th, Shane Van Gisbergen 21st, 22nd place finish for John Hunter Nemechek, Carson Hosevar 23rd, Ryan Priest 24th, Corey LaJoy 25th, Austin Dillon 26th, Ty Gillen 27th, 28th for Kaz Gralla, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 29th, Kamui Kobayashi, 30th. Harrison Burton, 31st. Daniel Suarez, 32nd. Eric Jones, 33rd. Brad Keselowski, 34th. Was again, the last car in the lead lap. Noah Gregson, first car lap down in 35th. Josh Berry, 36th. Timmy Hill, 37th. Was two laps down. Daniel Hemrick, two laps down in 38th. And again, 17 laps down. The only driver that DNF was McDowell. I do believe he pulled into the garage in the final 10 laps of the race. Uh, probably once that we had less enough laps that he wasn't going to be able to overcome anybody. Uh, who would have DNF'd in the late going. I think that's about when he pulled in the garage. Once it was mathematically impossible for him to not finish last in 39th and get another point out of it, it was essentially when he ended up pulling in. Again, 43 laps led for Byron, the most of any other driver today. Uh, only one time we saw a uh, pass, or really two, for the actual race lead was Chastain on a restart getting by Byron and took most of the uh, first 10 or 12 laps before the Green flag pit stops in the final stage for Byron to actually get back to the race lead again. Look at how those tires have burned off up the rear of his race car. That is the definition of burning rubber right there. Amazing. Here's your race winner, William Byron. Everything that they've gotten into a full day's work. Jamie? Well, William Byron admiring the burnout. He literally burned them down, gets picked up by Landon Walker, starts the year as the Daytona 500 champion. You come here today, William, get your first win at Coda. So many opportunities to make mistakes on a road course this size, yet you seem flawless. How did you pull it off in such a dominant way? Yeah, I feel like I made a lot of mistakes in the last 10 laps, just little micro errors, and Christopher was really fast there um, on the longer run. But uh, this sport is just so hard. It's so difficult to, you know, week in and week out, show up and have fast cars. And uh, we've had a little bit of a rough stretch the last few weeks, but just put a lot of prep work in this week. And i um, just thankful for the team I have around me, all the people uh, back home as well, uh, Joanne, who helps me, and... Uh, Ken, who is here today, uh, Max. So all those guys play an integral role in preparing, but uh, just super thankful for uh, having this opportunity. And Raptor, Chevrolet, Babley, and Liberty University, all of our partners, Exalta, Babley, yeah, everybody. Hit your cars. So it's just a lot of fun to uh, to win races, and it's really difficult. Oh, and relay too. So, uh, but we're gonna enjoy this one. All right, we talked about your boys over here. Your pit crew got it done today, three seconds faster than the one. That got you back out in the lead. What is it like having a team like this that you know you can count on when you come down pit road? Yeah, I just feel like when we're when we're on, uh, we're firing on all cylinders, whether it's pit road, strategy, uh, calls on top of the pit box for changes in the car. So um, just thanks to everybody on this team. There's not enough people that get credit, but uh, this is really cool. And um, like I said, we prepared really well this week and um it's just difficult man you just got to keep keep working all right william byron gets it done here in austin well, christopher Bob thompson with the runner-up position today christopher you were coming at the end there it looked like this 20 car was really fast did you just need another lap there yeah i mean obviously once i got to him it was going to be tough to pass him uh but just needed a couple of mistakes, man. William has been really, really good on the road courses, and he was flawless when it mattered today. Saw a conversation post-race there with, with Kyle Busch just a moment ago. Was that about the contact in turn one, and how did that go? 
I mean, yeah, obviously he's he's very upset, which you know he ended up turned around. And you know, first off, I'm I'm sorry to Larson in the five car. I got him earlier in the race, and uh, by no intention at all, I didn't mean to do that. But you know, KB is so frustrated about what happened in turn one, and you know, I I don't know. We were they were too wide going in there. I, I haven't obviously seen a replay yet, but uh, you know, I, I had no intentions of turning him, and and I'm sure we'll talk it out before the next race. Thanks, Christopher. Josh? Well, another strong day for Ty Gibbs, who comes home third. What more did you need to finish two spots better today? Yeah, you know, we were just a little bit too loose um, in the right-handed corner, so uh, I just wish we were a little tighter, but we did a really good job today. My team did a great job. Um, all props to them. Uh, thank you to Monster Energy. He gets us interstate batteries. Um, it was a good day for us. Uh, good points today. We'll just keep working hard. Five straight top tens for Ty Gibbs, guys. What a start to Great start for the second-year driver, Gibbs, who went through the finishing order of this race. Pretty much all the race stats, other than the fact uh, we ended up having seven different drivers lead at least one lap. Again, most of those were during green flag pit stops, but again, the only passes really on the track uh, for the lead during green flag conditions that weren't green flag stops would have been uh, William Byron getting passed by Chastain on the last restart, which would have been the beginning of Stage 3 restarts, and then he got it back about a dozen laps later. Uh, because he did fall to third, so he had to pass uh, Gibbs to get the second. Took him a while to do that, and then it took him another half a dozen laps or so to get to Chastain. But once he got there, uh, he never looked back. Uh, during the cycling green flag pit stops, we saw a handful of more drivers obviously lead laps in there as well. But uh, Byron, the dominant driver, dominant uh, everything really of the race weekend the day. He got the clean sweep. He was fastest in practice, qualified in the pole, won the race. You can't do any better than what William Byron did over the last 24 hours or so. Uh, as far as the race predictions for today's race, picked William Byron to win. There you go. Must have. Must have. I go four for four this week. Uh, three for three, and then I get the bonus point for picking Byron to win. He was my race winner. Picked Ty Gibbs to have uh, one of the must-have days compete for the win. He was third. Tyler Reddick was another one of those drivers I had pegged to potentially win the race today. He finished fifth, all in the top five. Uh, solid all around there. And as far as the sleeper pick uh, outside of, you know, Gibbs and Reddick would have went, it would have been Shane Van Gisbergen, who would have been 21st. Uh, he was running 10th at the time of a pit road speeding penalty uh, during the pit stops towards the end of stage two during green flag conditions, trying to short pit to get better track position and uh, probably could have had a top 10 day if it wasn't for that. But unfortunately, with the penalty, it put him back. So worst finish of his third career start uh, for SVG. So 0 for 1 on the sleeper pick, and then the don't have pick went 3 for 3 this week. They all finished outside the top 10. Kislowski, poor day, 34th. It, yeah, it's not good. Uh, he's finished 14th or worse uh, in all four Coda races now. He'll continue that streak going. He was outside the top 30 practice qualifying and now in the race as well. Just did not have speed, did not have pace. Uh, his teammate Chris Buescher did. That just goes to show how bad Kislowski is on road courses, <laughs> uh, especially with the next gen. As far as Joey Logano goes, he had a valiant effort to go from a 35th starting position to 11th. He did not have a great car all race weekend long, but they did a great job with really hardly any restarts as well. Again, only the two at the stage ends. Uh, I don't think they stayed out to try to get any stage points either, so that probably helped leapfrog a handful of positions. But needless to say, great job under pretty much an all-green flag day for Logano to go from 35th to 11th. It took him all day to get there. Uh, great work, but he did just finish outside the top 10, so I was right on that. Uh, and then I was also right, uh, the last driver would have been Michael McDowell, who ended up finishing last in 39th. Had the power steering issue, but even before that, I think he was only as high as 16th, and the power steering issue ended up happening late in stage two. Uh, didn't qualify well, uh, didn't practice well. He was outside the top 25 in both those categories, so. Uh, pretty solid. I mean, I almost got the clean sweep for the weekend. The only thing I got wrong was SVG getting a top 10. So I went um, 9 for 10 on my picks this week. Can't get much better. You know what that means? That means my fantasy team did really good. So we'll highlight not only that, but uh, the other top finishers in the league this week. If we get any other interviews, you'll get to listen into it on the side as well over the course of the Fox broadcast here on our post race. So, uh, Take a look, pull that up on my phone. I'm not going to be able to pull it up on the screen for you guys, but you can join the NASCAR Fantasy League on the NASCAR mobile app or NASCAR.com website. Search for KRC League, KRC in all caps, space, and then a capital L on League. Uh, if you win our league regular season or playoff championship, 
Uh, you get a chance to win two tickets to any NASCAR race if you're choosing the following season, excluding the Daytona 500. I'll put it in the chat again here, uh, KRC League. All right, let's see. KRC League, there you have it. That would uh, be the name of the league. You'll want to make sure that you get in there. You can't win the regular season championship, obviously, this late uh, into the entry, but you'll automatically be qualified for the playoffs. Our points will reset, so we'll have two separate champions. Uh, as far as my team, again, I had Byron uh, Gibbs. Byron obviously won the race, scored quite a few points along the way. Uh, you would have ended up having the most points of any driver today. Bell had the second most points of any driver and finished second because he did get a stage win in there as well. Uh, so had one, two, had Gibbs who finished third. A few stage points to go along with it. Reddick top five, a couple stage points. And Chase Elliott would have been the last driver on my team. Uh, had a spin and he also had a penalty uh, for cutting the S's. One of the few drivers who had a penalty for that today finished 16. So he was the only weak spot on the team. I had to put SVG though in the garage because Chase was in the top 10. I think he was actually in fifth when he had the penalty for cutting the S's. And then he had a spin when he was running 12th, lost a handful of more positions. But uh, nonetheless, uh, pretty solid most of the way around. Bonus points. Uh, I got the first one wrong on the head-to-head. -head. I had Hamlin beating Bush. Bush got a ninth-place finish. Uh, great day, honestly, considering that he had a spin in there. Uh, Reddick beating Larson got that right. Had Chastain beating Suarez got that right. And had Bowman beating Sindrick. So three for four on the head-to-head -head picks in total. League winner this week, despite all the points I got, I did not win this week. Monster Jam X10, who came into the uh, day second in the points overall, Ties for the win with Daniel uh, Nathan Daniel Powers. So tie for the win at 224 points in the league this week. Before we go over their team, here's Alex Bowman, your fourth place finisher. Um, you know, I, I, we had a good day overall. Like I think we we did a good job. We had good strategy. Um, the guys were working hard at trying to get me a little more rear grip to hang on longer, and might have had it um, just where we got where we came out back out on track that last stop. Um, we were kind of right in the middle of some traffic and I had to run really hard on low air and I just feel like I hurt the rear tires and, um, they just didn't hang on. So we had a fast Alec Camaro, just not enough to catch the 24, but, um, then we had to save some fuel and, and give up some spots there at the end. But, um, yeah, all in all, a good day for us. Want more. Uh, it's been too long since we've been at victory lane, but, uh, we're getting closer. Thanks, Alex. Fifth place finish here for Tyler Reddick. Bring me through your day and what more you needed. Yeah, you know, me and Billy Scott were just talking about that. Um, yeah, you know, nothing really sticks out for us. Never be unleashed uh, Toyota Camry, but, yeah, I mean, the obvious thing is we just didn't maintain the lead as much this time around. Um, obviously, the, the downforce level is a little bit different, so I didn't really feel like we are really bad in any one spot. It just it just seemed like certainly we were just, just decent, so it was um, kind of just I'd run wherever you kind of put me, so... Yeah, obviously, I feel like we kind of got behind the ball when uh, I made the mistake uh, in the very early in stage three. That kind of hurt us a bit for a bit after we came out on tires there in stage three. I thought we were um, pretty good, but yeah, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll go to work on it, try and see what uh, all we were missing. But um, yeah, a little bit adds up around this this big race track. Thanks, Alan. Another top five. For all right, uh, so back to the Fantasy League, as you heard, interviews from Bowman and Rennick. Uh, we have had interviews from the top five. See, this is what happens when Fox has the extra air time before they have to go off the air because of how quick the race was with the lack of cautions. Again, just two hours, 43 minutes, excuse me, and nine seconds total time on the race today. Uh, so mentioned tie for the race win at Coda for the Fantasy League, 224 points each for Monster Jam X10 and uh, Nathan Daniel Powers. So congratulations to those two. Um, looking at Monster Jam X 10's team, he had Byron, Reddick, Gibbs also, and Bell. So he had the same team as me, except for when I had Elliott, he had Chastain. That was the difference in him getting those extra 10 points. Uh, Ross Chastain ended up finishing seventh. Truex was in his garage, and Truex actually had more points than Chastain because of the stage points and a top 10 for. Truex as well, getting up the 10th there in the late going. Head-to-head -head picks, he had the same exact head-to-head -head picks as me, so I ended up going three for four there. 
Let's go back to the league. Going to highlight uh, Nathan Daniel Powers as well, who obviously tied for the race win. So we have some co-winners at Coda in the league this week. Uh, he also had Reddick, Gibbs, uh, Bell, Byron, and Chastain. So he had the same exact team, which obviously makes sense as to why he tied. And he had the same exact bonus pits, picks as me and as uh, Monster Jam X10. So same exact team. No wonder they tied in points and tied for the win this week with 224. With that being said, as good as my team was, it wasn't for the win, but I ended up finishing in third uh, with 214 points. Tied for third, in fact, with Evan 48-48. And Hercules Harrigan rounded out the top five at 212 points. She was uh, third in points coming into the league this week. So uh, it's going to tighten up just a little bit. You got second and third outscoring the points leader this week. Uh, it's going to be a tighter standings going into next week's race at Richmond. We'll go over the schedule for next week here before we go off the air. So give me a second to pull that up. Uh, practice next weekend for the NASCAR Cup Series is going to begin at 1030 Eastern Time. Uh, again, 1030 Eastern Time will be our first stream next week on the channel. Uh, 10.30 Saturday, practice, qualifying for the Cup Series, live commentary. Our race for the NASCAR Cup Series next Sunday, uh, it starts at 7, but our stream will begin at 6.30. So 6.30 Eastern next Sunday on Easter, um, we will be live for Richmond under the lights. Saturday, we also have NASCAR Xfinity Series coverage on the channel. So we have practice qualifying for the Cup Saturday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time. At 1.30 Eastern on Saturday afternoon, we will have the Xfinity Series race coverage. And again, the Truck Series are off uh, next week. And then we will have the triple header back uh, for Martinsville with all three series the following week after that. So we've got back-to-back -back short checks coming up here uh, in the state of Virginia. And as far as our coverage for today goes, that will bring us to a close. I appreciate everybody tuning in for this Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Coda. Congratulations to William Byron sweeping the weekend through top time in practice, qualifying, and getting the win in the race with leading the most laps. Uh, 113 likes on the stream. Make that 114 now. Appreciate everybody that's hit the like button. Be sure to do so if you haven't yet on your way out. And also be sure to subscribe for more NASCAR content if you haven't yet, as we are very, very close to 5,000 subscribers on the channel. Uh, we're coming into the stream, we needed 74. I don't think we got there. I'll check real quick. Um, yeah, we didn't get there. We're still about 70 away. So be sure to hit that like button. Uh, obviously helps these streams out. Uh, pushes the content further on YouTube, helps grow the channel. So does hitting that subscribe button. And I appreciate everybody that has done each and every one of those on a weekly basis and or coming and watching every single uh, NASCAR race, every race weekend, whether that be Cup, Xfinity, Truck. We have it all on the channel. We got Cup practice qualifying this year as well and hope to have some ad track content at some point throughout the course of the season as well. Uh, for the races that I attend in person. It's going to be a minute before I do, but uh, as far as that goes, again, we'll sign off. Uh, appreciate the support as always. See you guys next weekend for our streams, and have a good rest of your Sunday night, everybody.